podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks all over the country. Yes, indeed. On Saturday, September 12th, 2020. This is episode 1727. Wow. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether employees are working in the office or remotely, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This episode of The Tech Guy is brought to you by MySudo. Life is better without spam, ads based on activity, hacked info, or the risk of identity theft. Take back control of your privacy with MySudo. Download the MySudo app today, M-Y-S-U-D-O, from the App Store or Google Play. Or go to mysudo.com slash twit to learn more. And by Simply Safe. There are a lot of options out there, but Simply Safe is a no brainer. Get simple, professional monitoring day and night. Head to simplysafe.com slash twit and get a free HD camera with any purchase. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. It's time, yes it is, to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number. You might hear the air purifier running in the background at high speed. <laughs> uh, a little smoky up here in the Northern California. Stay safe, everybody. I hope you're doing okay, and I'm glad to see you today. Uh, even if uh, I'm effectively smoking uh, four packs of cigarettes a day now. <laughs> so are we all. So are we all. Phone number, if you want to talk tech, 8888-ASK-LEO, uh, 888-827-5536. That's toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or uh, Canada. Love to hear from you. The uh, website, important to remember that, is techguylabs.com. And I mentioned that because... Uh, uh, it's, you know, a lot of times you hear something on the show or, or you know, you, you maybe you half hear it and you go, what was that? Or maybe you'd like to write something down or whatever. Um, don't worry about it. It's, we got it. It's taken care of. All you have to do is um, go to techguylabs.com. That's absolutely free. And you can, uh, you can uh, find everything that we mentioned right there. Well, we know there's an Apple event now. Uh, coming up Tuesday, and really the only question is, what will they announce? Time Flies is the name of the event. Probably that tells you it's an Apple Watch. Yeah, I can't believe it. We just got an Apple Watch a year ago, but I guess they're going to do this every year now. So a new Apple Watch, the Series 6, or is it 7? <laughs> I guess it's 7, because we'll also see a new Watch OS 7 along with that. We'll see, I think they say, the rumor has it. Rumor has it. And you know rumors. They're sometimes right, sometimes wrong. Rumor has it. There, there'll be a new iPad, a new iPad Air. There will be something like the iPad Pro, Type-C connector and stuff. Yeah, you know, upgrades, upgrades, upgrades. Rumor also says no iPhone 12, although there's, there's a debate among rumor mongers. You don't want to see rumor mongers fighting. No, not a pleasant sight. There's a debate amongst rumor mongers. It's a Series 6 watch, okay, but watch OS 7. And you understand my confusion. There's a debate amongst rumor mongers about whether we'll see the iPhone 12 Tuesday or not. Normally we would, right? September, iPhone. But uh, Apple's already told us the iPhone will be delayed somewhat by COVID-19 and manufacturing issues. So my guess, my guess is Tuesday they won't announce iPhones. But what they might talk about, they might announce, I feel like we're very close to iOS 14. We got yet another update over the weekend, or I guess on Thursday or Friday. And then uh, maybe watch OS 7 to go along with the new watch. And then, yeah, usually the, the two go together, right? Features in the new watch OS are matched by features in the new 
iOS for the phone. New iPad, new iPad OS, right? So I think we'll see all of that. Mm, will we see Big Sur? And this is the this is the big question mark, because Apple, we know this year that gives us three months, well four months, September, October, November, December. So sometime between now and December thirty first, we'll ship. Well, ship's a funny word. Announce <laughs> a new MacBook with or Mac something, a Mac with Apple chips, Apple made chips inside. There's some speculation that Tuesday might be the day they'll at least talk about that. So we'll, you know, I'll watch with interest. I got all excited because for the first time in a long time, I received an invitation to the Apple event. Then I realized, well, it's not really anything that I can't do anyway. It's, they're streaming it on, on YouTube. Thanks for the invite. But hey, you know, it's the thought that counts. Then I got really excited because I got an invitation to a briefing. Now, that means I would be back on the inside. And then shortly thereafter, I got an invitation not to go to the briefing. <laughs> they sent a whoops email saying, no, 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 that was a mistake. Turns out it wasn't. I'm not going to take it personally. They, they, they did that to a lot of people because the, the briefing time was the announcement time. So I don't know. Something went wrong with the email. You know how that happens. I think there'll be a separate iPhone event next month. That's my guess. And might even be a separate Mac event in November. Why not? No one's going anywhere. <laughs> These are all virtual events anyway. Why not? But that's not what I want to talk about today. I'll talk about that next week. Because you see what I have here in my hot little hands? It's a cute little device. Looks like a book. Looks like a little book. It opens up. This is the new Microsoft Duo, which came... Uh, I ordered it uh, the minute they made it available, and it came on... Thursday, and I've had lots of time to play with it, the Surface Duo. And um, I was very intrigued by this because, you know, we're talking a lot about these days about phones with a larger footprint. You know, how can you get bigger than the big 6.1 inch or 6.4 inch screens, the glass slabs we're all used to? Can you get bigger than that? And, well, one way to do it would be to un have an unfolding phone, right? And Samsung does that. They actually have two, the fold and the flip. Microsoft decided to go a different way. They decided to do a hinged device that has two screens. So when you open it up, it's like a little, book a little booklet with two screens on it. But it's still an Android phone, first Android phone ever from uh, Microsoft, which by itself is of kind of of interest. And then it has some smart, some interesting uh, smart th ideas. For instance, uh, the two screens can kind of, you could have a, an application span the two screens, which for most applications really just looks awful. <laughs> or you can have the two different apps on the two different screens, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then some apps like uh, the, uh, the Amazon Kindle app have been specially adapted to work with the two screens. Actually, the Kindle app is kind of the perfect example because it looks, so this looks so much like a little book and the Kindle app now looks like it's just a little, it's a little book in my hand. And actually, I really like it. This is the most expensive Kindle I've ever bought, but it's really good. <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> Microsoft also has some in, an interesting ID called groupings where you can group two apps together so, uh, for instance, uh, I have a chess app on one page, a little chess board, and on the other page, a chess book, and I can use the two together. That's actually a really nice lineup. It kind of kind of works. Uh, you could do it with maybe uh, a, a book you're reading in OneNote. It's hard to c come up with use cases for this. Microsoft showed a few. It's kind of nice because you can have your your email in uh, on on one page be looking at the list of emails, and then when you open it, you can have it open on the other page. So in order to do that, I guess you... Let me see. Now, when I'm playing with it, the biggest problem comes up, which is, frankly, that um, <laughs> it, there's, pro there's something wrong with the software. <laughs> in a word, in a nutshell, it doesn't always... <laughs> Do what you expect, and I've had a number of times where the thing just freezes and doesn't respond. 
couple of times I've had actually reboot the machine. And this even after they pushed an update. So the first thing that happens when you get this little new, it's not a phone, Microsoft says, little pocket computer. The first thing that happens, has a fingerprint reader on the side there to unlock it. The first thing that happens is um, you get an update. And that apparently helps a little bit. But it's also still a little bit buggy. Okay, that's fine. I'm sure they can fix that. That's just software. Battery life is surprisingly good, considering the size of the battery. It's a fairly small battery, but it's actually uh, not bad. It actually uh, is usable. I kind of like that. It's gone through the day with me. No problem. There is one other issue, though, that uh, you're going to see in all the reviews, and I'm going to have to go along with it, which is it's a terrible camera. There's a single camera lens on it, which is on the screen. If you want to take a picture with it, you have to fold it over and point it. Uh, it's a, it's, it's, and it would be fine, you know, if it were a good camera, that'd be cool. It'd be cool, but it's not a good camera. <laughs> it's just a terrible camera. So, so that kind of takes away some of the fun. Um, anyway, I, um, I, should you buy this? No, absolutely not. $1,400. Forget about it. Forget about it. Should not buy this. On the other hand, as I had hoped, it's interesting. There's some little issues like I'm not used to holding a phone like a book. It's kind of, it's you know, you can't hold it very well with one hand. I mean, I guess you can. It's like a little, hold it like a little book. Think of it as a little moleskine, one of those little notebooks you see in the bookstore. That's the closest analogy. Ah, man, I want to like this so much. I'm going uh, to put my little sim, my little, my little sim in it. And I'm gonna um, I'm gonna play with it and give it some time, cause I bought it. I spent a lot of money on it. It's mine now. And uh, maybe it'll get better. I think it will get better with time. And you know, the, everybody said, and I think they weren't too far off. Never buy the first Microsoft product of anything, right? Never get the first of anybody. Never buy the first Apple product either, because they have bugs to work out. And you can't, you don't want to be the person who has to figure that all out. So don't be, don't be the guinea pig. Don't be the first to uh, buy it. But I will be for you. I will do that for you. And you can, you can watch, you can watch along with me. And I will let you know maybe the next, maybe the next one, maybe Surface Duo 2. So close. And you know, I think as software gets better, I am, I am actually glad I have it. Can I say that? I can say that. I am actually glad I have it. With its in, even with its imperfections, at least it's something new, right? Something different. So, iPhone, perhaps on Tuesday, perhaps next month, something else next Tuesday from Apple. Microsoft jumping the gun a little bit with a new Duo. There's the Note, the new Samsung Galaxy Note 20. Very nice. People like it. Incremental improvement over the old one. There's this Galaxy Fold, which I'm not going to buy. I don't think folding screens are there yet. That's why I thought the Duo might be interesting. Two screens with a hinge. So there is a, there's a gap between the two. There's a little hairline gap. But still, it's kind of like two screens. But not. 8888, ask Leo. That's the phone number. Uh, let's run down the list. Do not buy the Duo. You're going to want a new iPhone if, it, if you're more than two years old with your old iPhone. You're going to want a new Samsung Note 20 if you're more than two years old. I, I'm going to stick with the Note 10. I don't feel any need to upgrade. <sighs> There's a new uh, Motorola G9. That's a good choice for anybody who wants a budget Android phone. You know the best budget Android phone though is probably the Pixel 4a which came out a couple of weeks ago. That's really great. A lot of people love that. That's the Google Android phone, the Pixel 4a. Ladies and gentlemen, accept no substitutes, Schmidt. That's uh, Kimmy Schaffer, the unbreakable <laughs> phone angel. How you doing, Kimmy? <laughs> Getting closer to breaking, I think. <laughs> we all are, Kimmy. The world is burning. It's twilight. Oh, yeah. We're in the twilight zone right now. Oh, man. It's, yeah, Wednesday was nuts. Yeah. The yeah. day the sun did not shine. You've all seen probably the pictures from San Francisco of the red, red world. Sky. We had that here too. It was 
it was like weird. It was red all day. It was. It was weird. It made for some amazing photo opportunities, yeah. but that's about it. Well, the funny <laughs> thing is, and I think a lot of people were frustrated. If you can't, if you try to take it with your phone, your phone's too smart. It goes, the sky's not red. That's mm -hmm. a that's a blue sky. So it fixes it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I took a photo with uh, my Nikon, and it came out amazing. A good camera. Yeah. <laughs> will let you choose the white balance, and you can look make it look the way it's supposed to look. Yeah. Because uh, it's not. That's not outdoors, baby. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah, it was very strange. So anyway, I'm glad you sur well so sort of survived. Yeah. We have a p air Anything purifier happens. in your in your room. We have one in mine. I hope it's on and high there. Um, you every once in a while you hear a great whooshing sound. Yeah. As it's cleaning out because there's still a lot of smoke in the air. In fact, the air quality <laughs> is awful. Is uh was it was almost 300. Yeah. On Wednesday or two Thursday, I guess. But uh, it's now it's a a mere 180. <laughs> I mean, it was in the 400s like a what? week and a half ago. Yeah, what? I on that purple air oh, app. Yeah, I bought. Uh, you know what I did? I and I'll I'll have to report back on it. But I bought myself a purple, so I can have a little uh, sensor out here, so we'll know what it's like locally. Because hmm. uh, the Apple um, <laughs> air quality index turns out to be from Sebastopol. For for Petaluma. Yeah, so not that near. <laughs> not it could be different there. Yeah. Who should I start the uh, show with? Let's go to Dennis in Marina Del Rey. Or as they say today, Denis. Hello, Denis. Hey, you've helped me before, and I love Kim's wonderful laugh. Isn't it's she just, great? Uh, oh, I love her, and too. It, it yeah. just brightens the day. She's great. Yeah. Anyway, you've helped me before. I'm the photographer in Marina Del Rey, but I've got a major pro major problem. Oh, no. I Yeah, and you can, you, if you can't help me, then, then help nobody Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. <laughs> You are. I've researched this for days and on Google. I am running a desktop with Windows 10. And about a month or so ago, I noticed that the icons had little uh, green circles with a check mark in there. Oh, yeah. Which is OneDrive. And yeah. it was mess messing on my system because I use uh, Lightroom, and Lightroom didn't recognize. Oh. That. And so I uninstalled OneDrive because I've got this thing backed up six ways to Sunday. Yeah. And and I turned off syncing and I turned off backup. Yeah. And in, anytime I put an icon on the desktop, it shows up that it's owner slash Dennis slash creative cloud slash desktop. Well, thank you, Adobe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if that's Adobe or, or uh, Microsoft. Creative cloud is A-D-O-B-E, baby. Um, Why would they have do you the do, do you pay for uh, Adobe's Creative Cloud and the and cloud storage? You probably do. That's pretty much the only way to do no, it. I these don't. Days. You don't. No, I don't. So you have Lightroom, but you don't have Creative Cloud. Uh, well, I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I have a Creative Cloud. That you do. Installs you just don't pay for don't storage. Right. I don't put anything in the cloud. I use the. Uh, well, it thinks you are. <laughs> thinks you're, actually, it sounds like confusion. So um, there are ways to... I think you need to rebuild your uh, icon cache. Okay. So I think that's part of the problem. Um, is is that it's got a, it's got the it's just it's just an indicator on the icon. Although you said it does report that it's part of the uh, Creative Cloud, huh? In the yeah, ownership. One, one other quick. Thing. If I make hold, hold on just a sec. I'm going to take a break. We've got Scott Wilkinson coming up, but I, hang on. I'll talk to you off here. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Go ahead. So I think the first thing to do... And if I if I create a new icon and put it on the desktop, the properties say that it's, cre it's in Creative Cloud. Yeah. So that's strange. Um, I don't... Uh, I don't know what's going on exactly, except I would go into your Adobe Creative Cloud settings and make sure that it doesn't think it's syncing. Now, this is for even for icons that aren't in your Photos folder, or is this just for your Photos? Right, yeah, anything on the desktop. Anything, even just because it's on the desktop. Yeah. Uh, uh. <sighs> ah. I, uh, this sounds like it's a registry screw-up. Okay. 
So that's. Hey, I may have to talk to Adobe about that and, you know, their technical support. Um, well, I'm gonna, I'll tell you what. I'm going to put a link to an article called How to Remove OneDrive, the OneDrive check marks. And I, in the, I'll put well, that. I did that. I, I uninstalled the program and turned off. And that got rid of them. Yeah, but if you. But I think this is related uh, because I think you're, unless, well, when you say, so it's in the properties it says it's, it's Adobe Creative Cloud. Is this yeah, for photos? Adobe just says creative. Or if it, would this be the same for a, a yeah, but it would it be the same for a text file or is it just for for images? Any anything on the desktop. Even text files. Yeah. Wow. That's weird. So it may be an unsolvable problem. And before Oh, it's solvable. Time, no, 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 it's solvable, but it's just it's strange. Yeah. Um Twilight Zone time. Yeah. Anyway, before we run out of time, I yes, would, sir. Uh, if you're if you're interested, I've got uh, a Palm Trio, a Palm uh, Pilot, that, you know, with the old camera. I mean, it's in perfect condition. If you would like to have that for your museum, I have mine, so I, I appreciate it. Thank you, but I have them right back here. I've got all of the palms, but so they're in my yeah, museum. The went with it and everything. Very yeah. generous. I appreciate it, Dennis. You're very kind. Um, but no, maybe maybe somebody else would want them because I already have my great. my palms. I saved them because I loved those guys. They were great. Oh, they're, they're great. Yeah, yeah. Steve anyway, Gibson still has a few <laughs> Palm uh, Sevens in his freezer because he liked them so much. He he froze them so the batteries wouldn't decay, so that he could have them for the rest of his life. But he doesn't use it anymore, of course, because he's got an iPhone. <sighs> Thanks a lot. Appreciate your help. Good thank to talk to you, Dennis. I will keep... Uh, thank you. And I'll keep uh, an eye peeled for that one. That I bet you there's a way to fix that. Perhaps rebuilding the Shell Icon cache. Except it's not just icons. It's also in the properties. Why is Adobe... That seems like a bad thing Adobe's doing. Is, is, right. is, and if I go to Lightroom and say, you know, uh, any of the photos on the desk, because I'll keep photos on the desk to work on, uh, it doesn't see them. Yeah, there's something going on with Adobe. Adobe Creative Cloud is a nightmare. I'm really disappointed with what they've done with that. You may remember that people who had a photo uh, Lightroom on uh, their iPads lost all their local photos and settings yeah. with an update. Um, there's something going on with Adobe. I would go in your settings for Creative, because that's what Creative Cloud is. I would go to your Adobe, that Adobe app, you know, that you install right. to kind of keep an eye on things. That's doing it. I'd go in there and see if there's any settings that make any sense. I'll do that. Thanks a lot. Sure, Dennis. Let's get back to the music. God bless you. Have a wonderful Take week. Take care. Bye-bye. God bless you. The Tech Guy Podcast brought to you uh, this week by a really cool new program. I actually discovered this a few months ago, uh, and it was my app cap on iOS Today. It's called MySudo, and i tell you how I discovered it. I signed up for something. I asked, you know, I got a mailer. And it said, you want to have batteries in your house? You know, we can help you get a big government discount. And foolishly, I just went online and gave my phone number and my email. And I never heard the rest of it, the last of it. It just went on. They harassed me for months. And I thought, it's got to be a better way. And that's when I found my pseudo. With my pseudo, you create pseudonyms, uh, identities name, phone number, email address, even credit card numbers that are private, that are unique. You can give them out to anybody, but when they contact you, they'll contact you via the MySudo app. So I'm going to show you. I've actually got a couple of pseudos set up, one for junk mail and spam and one for inquiries. From now on, when I sign up for something... <laughs> it, it's it. They're going to use this uh, local phone number, but it's not going to ring my phone. It's just going to go right into my pseudo, this email address, uh, and I will be able to dispose of them appropriately. You can even surf the web within my pseudo so that your cookies and all that identifying information isn't released to the public. You can create credit cards, virtual cards, that will be unique to that vendor. You don't give them any logins or credentials either. That's the beauty part. When you set up MySudo, you're private. They don't even know who you are. No security-prone login or password. 
you create a private key. It uses private key crypto that only you have access to on your device. All the metadata stored on um, the MySudo cloud is stored encrypted. No one, not even MySudo, can read any user's communication. So these are very private, end-to-end -end encrypted communications. By the way, it's not just text. You can also do voice and video calls with MySudo. Look, if you want privacy for your daily activities, MySudo goes the extra step to give you a unique identity for any variety of things that you do. You can have one for shopping, one for selling. You can see I have one for junk mail and spam, one for inquiries. I actually have to create a new MySuit. I'll show you how, all, how easy this is. I'm going to give it a, you can give it a different look and so forth. This one is going to be for political contributions or inquiries. Uh, you probably noticed that we're in an election season. <laughs> and if you ever donate to a political party or even made an, make an inquiry with the political party, you will be getting texts, messages, and robocalls forever. So don't do it with your real phone number. Do it with your MySudo phone number. Watch how easy it is to add a phone number. I choose the country. Uh, I can say I want to have it in a particular area code. Um, I will <laughs> I will say 415. What? Oh, I, there's an extra thing in there. Let's do this. There we go. And it'll give me a 415 number. You can use any variety of uh, area codes or locations, but let's just pick one. So this is a 415 number. I'm going to choose that number. This is the, the identity I'm going to use for, and let's change the uh, email to politics. You can make it anything you want, but I'm going to say politics, and it's going to be a pseudomail.com address. Now, when I... Oops, I can't get politics. Let's do, uh, let's just do uh, Leo uh, the man. <laughs> Nobody probably has that. Let's try it. <laughs> Good, I can own that one. So <laughs> now I have a pseudo. I'm going to change this. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's change that. Take, go to the pseudo. I'm going to change the identity a little bit here because I have a different picture. Where do I do that? I think those three dots. Let's see. There we go. Oh, that's for notes. And then I can also change it. And You can pick from a stock or you can take a picture. I think uh, if it's going to be politics, I'm going to give it a dollar sign maybe. Or Oh, how about two fists? There you go. <laughs> you can use any photo you want. You can upload a photo. You can take a photo. So now that's a new MySudo that I've created. My third MySudo, which is called Political. That's the one I'm going to use when I make inquiries, respond to texts, give give money to political candidates or, or issues. So that is all segregated. If you want, you can have your phone ring, but then it'll go straight to voicemail in the MySudo. Same thing with text messages. It just doesn't bother you. It's a great way to have privacy. See, I'm already getting calls. By the way, did you see that? That was a call to MySudo. Somebody sees the phone number during the ad and they go, oh, let me call that number. You can go ahead and do that. That's fine because it's going to go right in there. Uh, there are three different subscriptions plans. I'm using Pseudo Max, but all plans come with unlimited encrypted communications between my Pseudo users for messaging, voice, video, and email. That's between users. Each subscription plan comes with working a working Pseudo profile, phone number, email address, and more. So that's for the outside world. But if you want private communication between two people, get your family and friends to sign up for my Pseudo, and they too can communicate with you privately, end-to-end -end encrypted. There's Pseudo Go, Pseudo Pro, and Pseudo Max. Each has increased privacy options. It's up to you. Here's calls coming into my... This must be a political a political call coming in right now. <laughs> and notice, it's identified differently. It's identified as going to my, my third Pseudo, and somebody's leaving a message for me right now. I can just zap it up so I don't see it. My pseudo takes protection of your data seriously. Not only do they not know anything, but when you download the app, they don't even ask for an email address or a password. They don't ask for your contact list. So it's completely private. You can quickly access and utilize any privacy tools you want, but my pseudo is the only all-in-one privacy app empowering users to take back and control their personal information. I think this is a great product. Whether you've been hacked or tracked, if you've had identity theft, if you've been scammed, spammed, or you just wanted to prevent those robocalls, look, they're coming in, but it doesn't bother me. It doesn't ring my phone. It doesn't bother me at all. 
I love my pseudo. Go to M-Y-S-U-D-O dot com slash twit to learn more or download the my pseudo app on the apple app store or google play store m y s u d o dot com take back your personal information control your identity you deserve that kind of privacy and you can do it with a my pseudo app i am a firm believer in my pseudo i love it and thanks for all the calls <laughs> didn't interrupt me at all I love it. MySudo.com slash twit. Thank you for your support, MySudo. And thank you for supporting the Tech Guy Show by using that special uh, address, MySudo.com slash twit. And uh, if you want to call me on MySudo, um, go ahead. 510-621-5346. Leave me a message. I don't mind. Or send me a text. That's fine. It all goes into MySudo. MySudo.com slash twit. What is hip? Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the old hipster himself, <laughs> Scott Wilkinson on the Tech Guy Show. Scotty is our official home theater geek, contributor at techhive.com, keeps us up to date on all the AV news. Hey, Scott. Hey, Leo. How you doing, man? I am How's well. Smoke? Smoky. How's it down there? Smoky. Very smoky. Yeah. It's smoky. Yep. I feel like... Um, <laughs> It, it almost looks like the apocalypse out there, man. Oh, that's I mean, awful. Uh, it's it, you know, it's it's really bad. I feel like uh, I've been smoking a pack a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do too. <laughs> Probably good for our voices. No, I just probably need some not. whiskey. <laughs> then I'll be sound like Orson Welles. So, what's up yeah. in your world? Oh, hey, I got a very interesting, very basic question from uh, a listener, Stanford Brown. And I thought, you know what? If he has this question, others probably do too. So I'd love to address it. Uh, he was looking at an AV receiver, uh, the Denon AVRX 4700, uh, which is specified to have 5.1.4 or 7.1.2 channel 3D audio support. And he wrote me and he said, what is that third digit? Through 5.1.4, 7.1.2, what, what is that third digit? Well, the answer is easy, but if you don't know, then you don't know. So I'm about to tell you, here it is. That third digit has to do with how many speakers you can have overhead. We've talked about Dolby Atmos before, right? The, for, for many years now, we've had surround sound. We've had speakers in the front. We've had speakers around the side. We've even had speakers in back. But we haven't had speakers overhead until a few years ago. And that, that is the most common thing, the implementation of that. It's called Dolby Atmos. And so that's what that third number is. The first number is the number of speakers you have around you. In, in a typical surround format, three in the front, two on the side, maybe two in the rear. That's five or seven speakers. Point one is the number of subwoofer channels you have. So typically you only have one subwoofer in your house. Some people have more than one, and I'll get to that in a minute. And then the third number is the number of speakers you have overhead. And it could be, in this case, the Denon receiver has nine channels of amplification, and you can split them up. You could have five channels around you in the surround, plus four channels overhead. So there, there, or there are nine equal channels. You could use them for anything equal, you want. You can. You could okay. even send two of them to another room if you want. <laughs> ah. As, as a zone. We used to two. do zone one and two. Yeah. So this is kind of like that. Exactly. Exactly. But if you want to have an Atmos system in your main room, in your main zone, uh, you can either have five speakers around you and four overhead or seven speakers around you and two overhead. Now, I, I wrote Stanford back and I said, I explained this and I said, I personally would rather have four speakers overhead and five around than seven surrounds and two overhead because... When things fly overhead, helicopters, rockets, whatever, you know, you, you want to have a sense of them going front to back or back to front. And you can't do that with just two speakers overhead. So and and the human ability to 
localized sound behind you is not as good as localizing sounds in front of you. Therefore, I don't think that there's that much good use for having two speakers behind you and two speakers kind of a little bit behind and to the sides. I think five channels around you is fine and having four above is really good. So that's what I recommended to him. Now here's another thing that, that's confusing. This Denon receiver is specified as a 9.2 channel receiver. And you might very well think, and rightly so, wait a minute, 5.1.4 means one subwoofer, but this says 9.2. <laughs> Two subwoofers? Two subwoofers what? is better what than one. What the hell's going on here? Everybody knows that, Scott. Well, here's the deal. The soundtrack, there's a difference between the signal, what is coming in from the content, how the content was created, yeah. versus how it's played back. And so this receiver, when it says 9.2, it means that it has two subwoofer outputs. So you could connect two subwoofers to it directly to these two outputs. But those two outputs both carry exactly the same signal. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not a problem. Oh, okay. It's not a, it's not a problem <laughs> at all. It's good. It's just confusing because you see 9.2, and if you understand this at all you know okay 9.2 means nine main channels and two subwoofer channels but then you see these numbers 5.1.4 7.1.2 and you go wait a minute why is there a 0.1 in one case and a 0.2 in the other case well one has to do with the content and all content that we receive has only one subwoofer channel one or sometimes called an lfe or low frequency effects channel okay usually it carries explosions and Here's you know, a nutty, very low frequency. Here's a nutty question. Yeah. Can you have too many speakers? <laughs> uh, the short answer is no. No. I, I once went to, I think it was an AES show many years ago, and they had a demonstration with a room with something like 100 speakers oh, in caramony. it. Caramony. <laughs> And they had them on all the walls, all the ceilings, and on the floor, uh, in the floor. Do you need some sort of special crossover? S yeah. S yeah for, for that many speakers, you do. Yeah, because you have to say, you guys do this, you guys do that. Right. You're in charge well, of this. Dolby Atmos, Dolby Atmos is wonderfully designed to actually take advantage of however many speakers you have. It doesn't care. That's the beauty of what's called object-oriented audio. So it... Dolby Atmos ha has a instruction coming from its bitstream, from the content that says this, the sound should be coming from the uh, le upper left corner of the room. Okay, well, what speakers do I have? I have this speaker and that speaker. So I'll put the sound in these speakers so that that sound appears to be coming from the upper left corner of the room. So that's the beauty of Dolby Atmos is that it's object based and you can put speak. You can put a sound anywhere in the room, and it'll figure out based on what speakers you actually have installed, which speakers should be oh, active. That's cool. So it, it so it's actually very cool. Does the job for you. It does the job for you. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, with channel-based systems like 7.1 or 5.1, a surround sound system. The, uh, the mixer had to figure out, well, okay, uh, they, they better have these speakers set up or I'm not going to be, they're not going to hear what I intend. With Dolby Atmos, doesn't matter. Hmm. You, can just put, you can just put your sound wherever you want it, and the Dolby Atmos system will say, okay, I need to put some of this sound in that speaker and a little bit of sound in that speaker because when you set the system up, you tell the system what speakers you have, and then it figures out how to use them. So it's very cool. It's a very cool system. But I wanted to try and make the difference between the signal itself, which has only one subwoofer channel, and a receiver that you'll see, many receivers say 9.2. And you go, wait, two subwoofers? No, there's only one subwoofer uh, channel of information, but it's going to two different subwoofers if you have two connected. And having two subwoofers is a good thing because it'll, uh, it can smooth out the bass response in your room. Okay, okay. Yeah, you don't want... I mean, it's not directional, but you don't want it to all come from under your sofa. 
Well, that's true. And and you can energize certain modes in the room where you sit here and it's really boomy and you sit oh. here and you go, where's the bass? Oh, where's the bass? I saw that. Where's I remember the that. Bass? Scott yeah. Wilkinson, read his stuff <laughs> at techhive.com. You can all, he's a contributor there. You can also hear him every week on the Tech Guy Show. Thank you, Scotty, our home theater geek, Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. Oh, little Scotty. Oh. So I turned down the gain a little bit. That's, it that looks really better. nice now. Yeah, I like okay, it now. Good. I'll it really save looks that as a preset. Special good. Special extra good. I will so save that as a keep preset. It, keep it that way. You're Update the you're the, the guy point. though. I mean, you you know, you're calibrating all that stuff, so you know. Right. You know what it right. should look like, but I think that looks yeah, nice. Yeah, but what, I like what a little it looks bit like of, on my you like it a little darker? Yeah, I just like I always I don't want it to be too flat. Right. I like a little model. The problem is, of course, what I see on my screen Isn't might be different than what yeah, you yeah, see yeah, because yeah. it goes through the internet and yeah, yeah. you know, the blah blah. Damn blah, blah, internet, so. I tell you. Damn internet. Gosh darn you internet. You <laughs> So you can stick around for the top? Yep, happy okay. to. Okay. Good. This is all yours now too. Have Thank fun. you. Colby B, now I'm dead on. And also, Dolby Atmos is incredible. It was the biggest... Oh, I was the biggest critic of Dolby and, and uh, Soundcore Infinity Pro proved me ignorant. I don't know about Soundcore Infinity Pro or Inf Infinity. I don't know what that is. Colby B, tell me. But uh, Dolby Atmos is incredible. I could totally agree with you on that. Totally. Uh, to Tokyo Tony, what did I change? To, what did I use to change my image? It's an app called Webcam Settings, which has nice set of controls. Uh, in fact, I can tell you, I'll bring up the settings panel. It has exposure time and gain, brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, white balance, temperature. Um, it has... You can you can zoom pan and tilt the camera, um, backlight compensation. It's 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 a really nice program, and that's what I use. Uh, Doctor Mom Grandma, what is the best setting on a Yamaha receiver to maximize the spoken word over sounds? I find that it's sometimes hard to hear dialogue over all that music and background. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, I'm not. I don't remember whether the Yamahas do. I know the Denon has a dialogue enhancer circuit. Uh, one thing you can do is go into the menu system and boost the level of the of the center channel to a little bit to, to whatever degree you think is necessary, a couple dB maybe, uh, and and that will certainly help. Um, you might also, this may or may not, in practice probably wouldn't help, so never mind. Uh, but uh, boosting the center channel, and if it has some sort of dialogue enhancement function, you might turn that on. But boosting the center channel is what I do. I actually have my center channel boosted by a couple degree, a couple dB. <laughs> you have to go into the menu system, into the speaker submenu, probably to find that. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, Phoenix Warp says, not sure if you saw that, but Sonos has um, an exclusive deal with IKEA that has IKEA-only speakers. Huh. I have not heard about that. Um, they're called the Symphonics. I'll have to look into that. That's, that's very good. Thank you, DIAF. Uh, oh, Soundcore is Anchor. Oh, okay. All right. I hadn't, I somehow hadn't remembered that do they have a 3d sound system i'll have to look into that um yeah Beatmaster, exactly right dr mom grandma if there if it's a nolan christopher nolan movie there is no fix he has the worst mix when it comes to dialogue versus uh, other sounds you're exactly right about that i noticed that is well we'll have to continue stick this around later. for the top yep leo laporte the tech guy 88 88 ask leo the phone number let's go to line three that would be phil in arvada california hello phil 
Hello, Leo. Actually, it's Colorado. Co yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> Just a typo there. You're right. Arvada, That's Colorado. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Thank you for taking my call, and it's great to talk to you again. Nice to talk to you. I have two short questions for you concerning VPN. Okie dokie. You have recommended ExpressVPN, and I know that's a sponsor of yours before you have to say it. Uh, <laughs> I still have to say it. It's a sponsor. It. Okay, it's a sponsor. Okay. Um, I have high-speed Internet from Comcast, and, when I, and I have ExpressVPN on my laptop and on my tablet. Okay. When I run a speed test on my tablet, which is uh, wireless, Yeah. Um, I'm getting like over 300 gigabits per second. Megabits. I'm sorry, megabits. What am I saying? And um, that's about the limit of what you can get on Wi-Fi. So that's good. Right. That's okay. very good. Now, when I activate ExpressVPN, it goes down to somewhere around 50 to 60. Yeah. And I'm wondering what's up with that. That's normal. So any VPN is going to slow you down because you're going from your 200 megabit Comcast connection. Now you're going out into the Internet through the VPN to wherever your VPN server is. And now if you just let most Ex ExpressVPN does this, but I would imagine most uh, consumer VPNs do this. If you just let them choose the server... ExpressVPN has a technology called, I can't, Smart Select or something, that chooses the fastest available server. But you're going to be limited because you're going through an extra layer, right? Immediately, okay. that's going to slow you down. You've got to go right. an extra step. And then it's going to depend on the speed of that server. ExpressVPN, uh, one of the reasons I like them, besides the fact that they give us money for their ads, which really helps, but one of the reasons I like them is uh, they have kind of made a commitment to providing a lot of bandwidth to their servers. You're, in effect, now using their server's bandwidth, right? Right. So both up and downstream, because they're downloading it to their... You're going to their server via your speed, but it's their download and then out. So they that's expensive. Uh, and that's one of the things... That's one of the main costs of a virtual private network for the provider is, you know, ExpressVPN is in almost 100 countries, so they have to ha f uh, provision servers all over the world with enough bandwidth so that the number of users that are typically on it will get a decent performance. I think 50 is f pretty good for a VPN. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It lets you watch HD video, for instance, which most uh, most of the time on a VPN you can't. So yeah. that, that really is a, a factor of you've got, a, in effect, a new uh, a second ISP because you're getting the speed of the ISP P, your in case Comcast, but then that's getting limited by whatever the speed of the VPN is. That's a second ISP. Now, uh, just a week ago, Tech Radar, I'm looking, thanks to chat room to this link, did the fastest VPNs for outright speed in 2020. And they said ExpressVPN was the fastest. Okay. So 50 admittedly is a lot slower than what you got. Yeah. But, but it, I'm, I'm still not having any trouble streaming, so... Yeah, you shouldn't. Yeah. yeah, you shouldn't. Okay. So, uh, that, yeah, you're going to... you're all, And that's, frankly, in the early days of VPNs, it's why most of us didn't want to use them, because it would feel sluggish. Okay. 50 megabits is not going to feel sluggish. No, not at all. No. Okay. Uh, quick, I'd like your opinion on something very quickly. And around my house, your opinion is gospel. So here we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, my IT folks at work, uh, I was talking to them about VPN, and my IT folks are saying, you do not need VPN at home. You're wasting your money. Well, that's because so, they think... your opinion. That's because... Well, it just depends what you're using the VPN for. Mm -hmm. They are thinking of a VPN in the kind of old-fashioned sense of you would use it in an open Wi-Fi access point like a coffee shop to protect yourself against a malicious a rogue access point so if you go to the coffee shop and you're on their wi-fi anybody else on the wi-fi can see what you're doing and if the coffee shop is really rogue they can see what you're doing you okay. by the way so can comcast but presumably you trust comcast a little bit more than the coffee shop that's what the that's what your it guys are saying but i that so that's another reason so you're not using it for security at home 
But there are other two other reasons you would use a VPN at home. One is because Comcast, like most internet service providers, resells your surf da surfing data to marketers. Right. That's completely legal. Sure. There's no prohibition on them doing that. And if you look in your user agreement, you'll see that they reserve the right to do that. So I'm going to presume, presume they are. They make a little extra money that way. Sure. Most ISPs do. So using a VPN now says, I don't want Comcast to know what I'm doing. Uh, but keep in mind, the VPN does. They suddenly are now, like I said earlier, your second internet service provider. They see what you are doing. Because whoever puts you out on the public net and whoever does your DNS lookups, they're going to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people now are starting, Firefox offers this, Chrome I think is going to offer it. Uh, they do their DNS, their, their server lookups, encrypted. Comcast and others hate this because that prevents them from seeing what sites you're going to in some ways, but not always. Uh, they still can very easily see what else you're doing, including your web history. It's very easy for them to get that. So I think if you want privacy from your ISP, that's a second reason that is legit at home. The third reason that's legit at home is that if you want to be in a different country, and this is not illegal, but if you're a net, for instance, say you're a Netflix subscriber, you're in U.S., Netflix looks and says, okay, here's what's available to you. If you say to your VPN, now I want to be in London, so you, instead of letting it pick the fastest one, you pick London. Now Netflix, you refresh Netflix, thinks you're an English subscriber, and you'll see the content that's available in England. That is completely legal. A number, uh, BBC's iPlayer, for instance, is a cat and mouse game. As soon as they figure out that some, the VPN, these are VPN IP addresses, they'll block it again. It's kind of a cat and mouse game, so it won't always work. But generally speaking, that's another reason to use it is to, to uh, bypass content, geographic content restrictions. Or any geographic restriction. There's other geographic restrictions. So you now suddenly are in whatever country you're coming out of uh, the VPN on. So that's, this, that's three reasons to use it, one of which your IT guys are right, useless. You don't, you don't have to worry about security at home. If you do, you've got a bigger problem. Right. But okay. the other two do still hold. Hey, thanks for the All call. Right. It's a good question. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Leo. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, it's a little... It might violate a license agreement, so you should check with the provider, some providers. BBC Eyes Player does not, because it's paid for by license fees from... Uh, British TV owners. That's how it's supported. So their iPlayer, they don't want people who don't pay license fees to use iPlayer. But instead of making you log in, they just check your IP address. And most of the time that works. I Somebody emailed me and said, hey, it stopped working. That means they figured out, oh, that's a VPN IP address that you're using. So we're not going to let you use iPlayer. Uh, but generally what happens is a little cat and mouse game. So the VPN company changes IP addresses. They buy a new block. They say, oh, well, we're not, we're not uh, coming in from a VPN anymore. And that works again for a while. It's a cat and mouse game. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number if you have a question or a comment or a suggestion or a tip. We're all in this together. I think of uh, the Tech Guy show as you know, kind of our chance to get together and talk about how to use technology better. That's really what this is all about. I'm just the ringleader. 8888-ASK-LEO. The website's free and open to all. TechGuyLabs.com. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the star of our show, Scott Wilkinson. Oh, I got to turn on your mic. Wouldn't be much good if it just have you sit there. Wouldn't be very much. I could do semaphore. <sighs> <laughs> so, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, Bootleg Craig was asking if I knew of any uh, good speakers to use with a turntable and a 10 year old Denon receiver. And I asked him uh, bookshelf or floor standing, and what's your budget? And he said, floor standing, $300. I don't think I know any good floor standers that cheap. That's really, really cheap. Um, so anybody in the chat room have any ideas? Maybe you might know of some. Uh, 
Let's see. Tokyo Tony says, so I just have two speakers, no subwoofers. Do you call that a 2.0 system? Yes, exactly. That's precisely what I call it. And that's precisely what uh, everybody in the industry calls it. 2.0, meaning two main channels, no subwoofer. Uh, Mike B. asks, if, if Atmos requires ceiling speakers, how can a phone like my new Samsung Note S20 Ultra have it? And the answer is it simulates it. It simulates it with relatively sophisticated DSP, digital signal processing, uh, with phase manipulation and, and other tricks that make it seem more or less like maybe some sounds are coming from above and from to the sides. Some algorithms do that better than others. And so really what, what the uh, Samsung and phones like it and devices like it are saying is they are compatible with Atmos. They can accept an Atmos content. They can accept Atmos content and they will reproduce it as good as they can. And this is part of the point of Atmos, again, as I said on the on my segment, that it doesn't care what speaker configuration you have. It will do the best it can with whatever you have. And so if you have a phone <laughs> with a couple of speakers in it that has some DSP that simulates, tries to simulate the effect of the sound around you, up above you and around you, uh, it'll do that. It'll accept the signal and it'll say, okay, what have I got? I got these two little tiny speakers and I got this DSP. I'm just going to let it do its thing and hope for the best. So that's, <clears throat> that's what it is. Um, so it's fake Atmos. Sounds pretty good though. See? Yeah, exactly. Um, I was just, you know, I don't normally watch movies or listen to my phone's speakers uh, for music. Um, but I was watching something the other day. I mean, I, what was it? Oh, it was the trailer for Dune, the new Dune coming out. And I have an iPhone XS and I never listen to its speakers, but for, some, I was watching this trailer. It was in my news feed, and I said, Oh, the new, the trailer for Dune. I want to see that. And darn, if it didn't sound like it was going beyond the boundary of my phone. And that's the key. It actually went up a little beyond the boundary of the phone. And that happens. Some devices do that better than others, but some do. And uh, I think it's pretty cool. Londog says uh, about speakers on eBay or clarify $300 per speaker or for a pair. Unfortunately, good speakers cost money. Londog, you're exactly right. Good speakers cost money. Not always. I mean, for example, I was thinking of the Fluence uh, AI60s, which I reviewed for TechHive some time ago. They are, I don't remember, three or $400 a pair. They're bookshelves, but they sound amazing. Now, they're Bluetooth speakers, self-powered. You wouldn't need the Denon receiver at all. Uh, and they sound remarkable. For three or four hundred dollars a pair, now I've got to go figure it. Now I got to go see. Um, let's see here. If I look up Fluons, I was amazed at how good these speakers sounded, and for how little they cost. Uh, Fluons AI sixty. Let's see if Fluons has the pricing. In the um, in their website, let's see. Nah, they don't have it at the top. So, oh yeah, they, yeah, they do. Three hundred bucks, two ninety nine ninety nine. Three hundred bucks for a pair. That's so there, right there. You're in your budget. It's a bookshelf, not a floor stander, and it's not a. Uh, it you wouldn't use your Denon receiver at all, uh, but they sound phenomenal. Now, I'm about to start reviewing an, a Klipsch speaker that's much like the Fluence, bookshelf, um, Bluetooth, self-powered. They're in the, I believe, $800 a pair range, so they're quite a bit more. Uh, if you were to, if you wanted to get a pair of floor standers, I just looked up SVS, which I've always liked as a, 
a value brand. Uh, they have uh, the, uh, I think they're called the, wait a minute, I'll find it here. I've got it here. Um, the Prime Pinnacles, Prime Tower, um, which is $500 each. So that's more than you want to spend, even if it's a per speaker amount. Uh, Emotiva is another possible brand. I have I don't know much about them. I've heard I good have things. A, about I have Emotivas, which I like, but they're pretty old. Uh -huh. They're like eight years uh -huh. old, but they're very nice. They're I have very a, nice. a Perions and Emotivas. Two different. Well, the Perions uh, are phenomenal. They're, yeah, they're great. The, I would say the Emotivas are equivalent. Um, uh -huh. They're both of those are a three, four, five, a five point one system. So I have the mm -hmm. sub and the surrounds and the center right. and the left, right. And they sound great. They're towers. Uh-huh. They're towers. Yeah. You, you, well, you bought them some time ago. Yeah. Emotiva. Both the, uh, both the Perions and Emotivas. They're both American-made and I think good. Uh-huh. Oh, and Elac would be another. Oh, definitely go with Elac. I wish I, you know, if I were buying more speakers, I'd get Elacs. Yeah. I don't know what they're, let's see, um... <clears throat> I don't have much time left. Let me just quickly look at ELAC. Because, uh, yeah, if you can get an e pair of ELACs, ELAC speakers, not East L.A. College. Um, ELAC speakers. Where's ELAC? Here we are. Products. Got a minute left. Um, let's see here. Floor stand speakers. This website uses cookies. Yes, I know. Floor standing speakers. Um, come on. Would you Where get the debuts? Where, what what level would you? Well, at at three hundred dollars. Oh, you're still trying to find three hundred dollars well. speakers. <laughs> well, but I'm trying to find the best best <laughs> value I can. Yeah, three hundred is kind of uh, hard. It's very hard. Yeah. For especially for floor standers. Um, but let's see the debut. That that well, may be too high end. They have a, actually under their product list. They have a whole list of floor standing speakers. Yeah, they sure do. Debut two, debut reference, Unify, Vela. The debut, the DF fifty two fifty two might be the one. Well, it's le I'm sure it's the least expensive. All oh, right, see, Scotty. They're, they're thank 280 you. Two hundred eighty bucks each. Each. Thank you. Just get Leo. one. You don't need two. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches. Got that new Microsoft Duo phone. We could talk about the, the Windows phone. It's not, what is it? It's not a Windows phone. It's a Surface, I guess. But it's from Microsoft. It's Android. We could talk about potentially what Apple might be announcing on Tuesday. There's going to be an event. Big event. All are invited to watch live. <laughs> 10 a.m. Pacific time on September 15th. 8888-ASK-LEO is my phone number. Anything you want to talk about, let's talk about it. 888-827-5536. Website, techguylabs.com. You can go there to find uh, audio and video from the shows. Uh, all 1,727 of them. And uh, yes, that's that's how many. Been doing it since 2004 uh, as the tech guy, and since 92 as just some guy on the radio. Been talking about computers since 92. And back in 92, there we weren't talking about smartphones or smart watches. It was pretty much just Windows or Mac. That was it. Eric on the line. He's calling from uh, Hollywood, California. Hello, Eric. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. This is going to be a basic question for you. I've got a HP laptop, and it's developed a odd thing. Uh, well, basically, I've I'll start it up, and it'll go through the the windows will come up, and then my desktop you know icons will come up, but it's frozen. And when I move the cursor, uh, it's it's like it drags a little blue screen around in little boxes with you know by the cursor. If I, that's all I can do is move the cursor. So the mouse does move anyway. That's a good sign. So it's not frozen in the sense that it's not it stopped computing, but it's stopped booting. Does it get all the way to the desktop so your icons are there and everything? 
Yeah, I come through there. I'm looking at all the little icons. And does it operate at all, or does this happen every time you start it up? I have to. I have to. I I can't even power it down or or you know I shut it down. I have to literally hard stop it. Well, I'll give you a little tip first of all on the. Oh, yeah, I understand. You can't you can't hit a menu, but you know you can just press and hold the on off switch for a few seconds. It'll turn it off, right? Yeah, yeah. and I've tried a lot of the tricks, and I mean I pulled off. So so, uh, but just yeah. answer these questions. So this is every time you boot, you never have access to anything. It's just when it starts up. Yeah. Okay. That's all I can so, do. so that's a bad boot, and it just means that in the process, you know, uh, the way a computer starts up, it it starts as a box of rocks, then you apply electricity, and the rocks go, huh? And it loads in first some program. A computer without a program is nothing, right? Just a box of rocks. So it loads in its first program from firmware, and that's what says, oh, I have a hard drive, and it says, go look there. Because I think there's something special for you. And it goes and looks and goes, oh, and it lo loads the master boot record. And that says, hey, I got an operating system right here on the hard drive. Would you like it? And he starts loading that. And you're seeing all of that working. So there's nothing wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with your hardware, in other words. But what's happening is as it's loading in the operating system, it gets so far, you see, do you ever get to log in? No, 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 and, and you, you, you know when you have, when let's say you want to delete a big section of something, and, and you use your cursor and you highlight that. Yeah, I understand. Kind of like a little blue curtain. Yeah. It goes, doesn't. It doesn't matter what you're getting. That's not relevant. What is matters is, okay. can you at any point you? So this, it, I'm trying to find out at what point it stops loading the operating system because that's what's happening. Well, I, I, as I said, look, if I start it up and it goes through the. Windows comes up, and then my dad does. Stop, stop right there. Windows comes up. You don't have Windows set up to log in. It just goes, it's, you would not normally log in? No, no okay. login. It just, so it, it goes, goes, so your Windows is going, and your desktop starts to show up? It shows up. It's just the cursor I can move, but it that is it. The, it so do you see the, zero yeah, I understand. Do you see the start menu at the bottom? Yeah. So, okay, so... This is really late in the loading process. So fortunately, it's probably an easy thing to fix. So there's a couple of things you can try. You know, the obvious end thing, if nothing works, will be to reinstall Windows. And everything will be fine. Your Windows is nothing wrong with your hardware. Almost certainly. Because you can see the screen. It got through most of the loading process. That means you're... Your video card's working, your motherboard's working, your CPU's working, your hard drive's, everything's working. It's just that that some of that software on the hard drive can get damaged and corrupted easily, by right. the way. Right. And that's all that's happened. So it's loading along, okay, here we go, we're getting Windows, it's getting good, and then all of a sudden it goes, oh, and it just <laughs> stops. Right. The artifact of the dragging of the thing, that tells you nothing. That's just the code that did get loaded properly can continue to run, but but it can't respond past that point so uh now i'm taking i'm gu guessing because you don't have to log in you're probably using windows 7 yes okay um so windows 10 the more modern version has better recovery facilities but windows 7 you ever heard of something called safe mode yeah i've heard of it okay so this is the first thing you're going to do which is to shut the thing all the way down and then, uh, depending on the age of your machine, it's an HP. I'm going to think that it's going to be you tap the F8 key repeatedly while you after you press the on switch. Because what you're doing is you're going to you're going to get Windows the, to get a startup menu that that precedes loading the whole operating system because it's before that part where it's crashing. And you're going to get a screen that's going to say, oh. Okay, here's your startup settings, and there's a number of different choices. I'm going to say choose safe mode with networking, and see if it'll go through the whole boot at that point. If it gets to Windows, it won't look completely normal. Your screen might be chunky because you're loading a VGA driver instead of the normal video driver and stuff. But if the mouse works and menus work and all of that, then that's good. Then it means, oh, 
it's a driver that's loading later. Safe mode loads up a minimum set of drivers, kind of the basest model version of Windows. If that works, this is an easy thing to fix. All right. And, and, and what it'll be is, is really going out and, and kind of, rec you know, recovering Windows. There's a, a Windows, re I think even on Windows 7, there's a recovery process available. Uh, if you hit Windows key and type recovery in the safe mode, and what it'll do is it'll reinstall the drivers. It'll reinstall critical system files without modifying in any way your data, your hard drive. So all your programs will still be there. Every th it's the minimum. It's a fix routine. And I think that's really all you need to do. I think there's a bad driver in there. Probably the video, almost certainly the video driver. So everything's going along, and then it says, okay, now let's load that video driver that gives you the beautiful, you know, high-resolution screen. And it's choking, and that's why you're getting the weird effects with, this, with the clipping rectangle and stuff like that. Right. So a bad video driver. Another way to do it once you get into safe mode is, uh, is to install an updated video driver. In fact, once you're in safe mode, you might even want to try updating your, your Windows machine because the truth is, at this point, Windows 7 is a risky thing to use because it's not getting yeah. updates anymore. So right. at some point, you're going to want to install Windows 10. That would be another thing you could do to fix this would be to install Windows 10 on top of it. Uh, and I don't know if you can do that from safe mode, but you might be able to. So there might be an upgrade Windows option. But, but safe mode with networking is what you want. Just to see. If everything works fine, it means something that's loading, some driver, probably the video driver, is crashing. And that's, what's, that's what you're seeing on the screen. So hit the S8 key while it's... Uh, while, it's while it's booting up. Booting if up. that doesn't work, more modern machines, it's the shift key. So you just tap it. I just go tap, 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 tap while it's starting up. And eventually you'll see that menu and it'll say, oh, what do you want? What, what do you want Thank to do? Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you for calling. Uh, yeah, it's frustrating because it's stuck and now what do I do? And I can't do anything, really. I can't. There's no menus I can go to. It's, you know, <laughs> it's a box of rocks and uh, it was getting all the important programming to get it to work and then it got something bad and it just got a little bad piece of fruit and psh, that's it not good uh but fortunately there is a solution it's not such a hard thing to fix um yeah the system file checker sfc but i, it's, I thought that sounded a little too complicated to get into I was an HP desktop, as I remember. The Tech Guy podcast brought to you today by Simply Safe. Love my Simply Safe home security. I've set it up for friends, for family. I set it up myself. It is the simply the best home security. It's a no-brainer. It's inexpensive. It's easy. You could do it yourself. No installer traipsing through your house. And it's a lot less expensive for the same exact service. Here's the thing about home security companies. Most of them, and you may have noticed this, kind of trap you with long-term contracts. They're kind of tricky, high prices, and frankly, terrible customer support. There are a lot of op options out there, but there is only one no-brainer. Simply safe. They've got everything you need to protect your home with none of the drawbacks of traditional expensive long-term contract home security solutions. Uh, Simply Safe has every arsenal, an arsenal of sensors, everyone you'd need. In fact, if you go to simplysafe.com slash twit, you'll see all of the sensors. Uh, cameras, motion sensors, glass break sensors, open door, open window, even water and dampness moisture sensors. So you could, I have one underneath my water heater in case it leaks. I love that. You can blanket every room, every window, every door, tailor it exactly to what you need. No more, no less. And there's no drilling. There's no wiring. You just peel and stick. In fact, you can even take them with you if you move. That's how great the Simply Safe system is. And then you get professional monitoring, the same quality monitoring the other guys offer for a lot less $15 a month. That's about a third what the other guys charge. And that's 
24-hour monitoring, day and night, ready to send police, fire, medical professionals if there's an emergency. This whole thing you can set up without a technician in under an hour. It'll be quick, simple, and you'll feel good because you'll know your family is safe. You're safe. No pushy sales guys, no contract, no contract. And no hidden fees, no fine print, 15 bucks a month. That's it. That's why Simply Safe is the fastest growing home security solution in the country. In fact, it's why U.S. News and World Report named them the best overall home security of 2020. It's why I recommend and use Simply Safe. I'm not the only one who thinks it's great. We all agree. Go to simplysafe.com slash twit simplysafe.com slash twit. And as a little thank you for mentioning twit, for you know going to that address, you'll get a free HD camera with any purchase. That's right. A free HD security camera to add to your system when it's just as long as you buy anything there. Simplysafe.com slash twit. I have the Simply Safe base unit, which makes the calls and key and the beauty the first of all it's attractive. You could put it anywhere. But second of all, you, the bad guys can hammer us. They can beat it up. They can throw it. It doesn't break. It's very, very secure. This is a, You can even unplug it, and it'll still, the police will still come fast. They come faster with Simply Safe because they can tell what's going on. I think it's a great thing. SimplySafe.com slash twit. Get that free HD camera with your Simply Safe system. SimplySafe.com slash twit. Thank you, Simply Safe, for supporting the tech guy and keeping me safe. And thanks to all of you for supporting the tech guy by using that special address so they know you saw it here, right? SimplySafe.com slash twit. And now back to the show. So this, um, while I, it's hard for me to say, oh, you should buy this, I wouldn't buy it. There's a lot to be said for it. It's kind of cute. Uh, this is the Microsoft launcher. Because I want to show you there, it's if it sort of works. Oh, I could just use uh, I could just use one note. So let's uh, let's do a quick note, right? I'm starting to write. Let's get the keyboard now. If I do that, in theory, yeah. See, this is the problem. Maybe. Yeah, see, in theory, <laughs> once you have the keyboard open. If you if you do this, yeah, it's supposed to. Yeah, but see, it doesn't. And that's a Microsoft program, so I don't know. Hello. Um, but there's something, I mean, I like this. So, for instance, I can have um, my audio book in one window, and I can be taking notes. See, it's stuck. Sometimes it gets stuck. There we go. I could be taking notes in the other window. See, that's cool, right? That's that's the idea. Yeah, I I'm not that crazy about the note either, to be honest with you. I mean, I have a Note 10. I don't, you know, I think really, if if you you would only get this if you're gonna. If you want to experiment, you can have these groups, which is cool, where you tap that and two things open at once, which is kind of... So you can have two, a pair of programs. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO. Edward in Whittier, California. Hi, Edward. Yeah, hi. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. Uh, yeah, what's the new thing? Uh, I'm very new to social media and, and uh, computers as a whole, YouTube and so forth. Uh, but the, I saw an ad for uh, uh, a, a little gadget called Adblock. Yeah, I wouldn't use and that one. One more time? I would not use that one. Uh -huh. Anytime you see something advertised, <laughs> basically, anytime you see any add-on for your computer advertised, that's, a, believe it or not, a red flag. At least on TV, um, there are really good ad blockers that don't advertise. Ad block. The problem with ad block is it's uh, it, it, there's lots of problems. It's it spies on you. It doesn't do a good job. But if you want an ad blocker, there's a free one 
and this is why they don't advertise, because they don't make any money on it, <laughs> called uBlock Origin. It's the only ad blocker I recommend. uBlock Origin. Let me write it down. Yeah. All right. I, I, just, I was just kind of unaware of the nature of your program. I'm a first-time caller, and it's kind of, I've been, been here for over an hour, you know, over an hour. Okay, what, what did you call it? You, we put this on the website, too. uBlock Origin. And uh -huh. so the idea is of these ad blockers, and you know, obviously I'm ad supported. <laughs> well, I Everything I do is ad supported. Most sure. of the websites you visit on the internet are ad supported. So I have yeah. mixed feelings about blocking ads, but I'll tell you why. I will tell you this, and why, in fact, I will use ad you block origin, is because it's not the ads that bother me. It's the size of the files that these ads are. They can be massive. It's the security risk that they often pose because mm -hmm. almost all the ads you see on web pages are automatically sold and displayed. So it has happened and it will continue to happen that malicious yeah. software gets in these ads because right. a bad guy just buys some ads. And even if you're on a legit site, uh, you may be... Uh, have these ads foisted on you that's gotten better by the way that's not as the problem that it used to be but still for security for speed of browsing and so forth but you'll see if you put an ad blocker on you'll go to a lot of sites a lot of sites will say hey i see you're using an ad blocker you understand we don't make any money off of you you're kind of free riding would you like to donate or would you like to turn it off for a site and that's what i would recommend if you use an ad blocker maybe turn it off for the sites that you want to support um, there are browsers like Brave that have built-in ad blockers. Brave is an excellent browser. It's based on Google's Chrome browser, but without the Google stuff, and it has an ad blocker built in. And in order to kind of make everybody feel better, they have a system for paying sites you visit, uh, you know, a few cents for your visit, so that it kind of makes up for the fact that you're not seeing ads from the site. So it's complicated, yeah. Um, it's a it's an ethically complicated proposition, but I think there are legitimate reasons, uh, and it's because ad tech has gotten so in, in tr intrusive uh, that I, I yeah that I I think it's it not an uh, it's not an unreasonable thing to say. Look, I don't I don't want this. I pay for a lot of sites. You know, I this is how I make my conscience feel better. I pay for uh, journalism sites because I want to support journalism. Uh, I pay for. Uh, sites like uh, Medium, which is a, a blogging site. Um, and, and in order to kind of justify my, to my conscience, look, I'm not paying for it with ads. You know, there's no way you can pay this radio show, right? You listen to ads as you're, as you're listening to it. Yeah, no, I, I, get, I get all the big picture. I, get, I, I just said, again, I'm a truck driver. I'm just in between jobs right now. Again, I, it just, uh, and I just I'll, I'll be listening to a song, you know, a, any song. You know, and you think, and, and then you get deluged with an hour long. Ah, well, ad, okay, okay. I thought you were talking about ad blockers and browsers. So you're saying you want an ad blocker on the radio? Well, on YouTube. Does ad block? You know, oh, YouTube. YouTube. So I, I, YouTube yeah. has a solution, which I highly recommend. If you're listening to YouTube music, buy YouTube music or YouTube premium. They're the same thing. You get both. Right. And then you don't get any ads at all. Ad blockers will work on YouTube. They will. But at that point, you you know, that's now you have to, to say in my mind, okay, I'm free riding. I'm basically using their bandwidth for free. And so I prefer, and I do pay for YouTube because I don't, you're right, I don't want to see those ads. It's a, it's a complete waste of my time. So I pay well, for yeah, YouTube it's Premium. Yeah, like I don't blame you. Now you hear ads on the regular radio, right? And there's no way to block those. And frankly, that's how I've been made my living for the last 40 years. Uh, so so I have mixed feelings about this. What what I would recommend doing to the degree you're able to, now you're out of work, maybe you, maybe you don't can't do this right now. But at some point, yeah, use the ad block. Don't pay for an ad block because that's crazy. So anything you see advertised. This, this, this particular ad commercial that I saw, you know, on a YouTube ad, a YouTube commercial it's just a little gadget that you stick in to the side of your computer you know before you even no, go yeah, on. do not do that <laughs> okay so <laughs> there's it's, software ad blockers that work better and uh, the reason i say never buy something like that that's advertised they're making money somehow right. and 
maybe they're they're oh you have to buy that little dongle but i'm going to guess also they're selling information about what you're doing online so okay. you're much better off using something like uBlock origin which is in your browser it will black block youtube ads i would recommend you know and this is something everybody has to kind of ethically you know think about uh i would recommend buying uh stuff if you can afford it and so youtube premium comes with youtube music you get both uh, you don't get ads on YouTube. You get YouTube Music. It's ten bucks a month. I can't remember what it is. That is, is for for my conscience is an easier thing to do. Uh, and I understand. You know, we're used to hearing music for free over the radio, but it wasn't free. It never is. We, there's ads. You know, so we got to figure out a way to to both support good journalism, good music. You know, the artists get paid. All of that stuff. Same thing with Spotify, for instance. If you listen to Spotify, there's a free tier with ads. You pay for it. You don't have ads. And the artists are getting paid, too. I like that. What'd you say, John? Yeah? Sadly, I've been nowhere, man. <laughs> He has traveled in the past tense, every road in this here land. Johnny Jet, he's our traveling guy. JohnnyJet.com, his podcast is on that website, JohnnyJet.com slash podcast. He does a great YouTube series, 39 questions with travel experts. But the best thing, the best thing Johnny Jet does is join us every week and talk about the way it used to be. <laughs> and the way it's going to be and the way it is now. The and world's actually, changing. The world's changing. And I, and yeah, travel's going to come back. Tickets for tomorrow. Where are you going? Because it's 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 so smoky here, and I got two little kids. Get out. But I was looking at the flight loads because I was like, you know what? I'll go I'll go drop in on my dad in Florida. There's a triple seven on there American. You go. There you go. Usually wide open, but it's it's booked solid. So I'm like, you don't want to get on a full my, plane. Yeah. I don't want to get on a full plane, especially with my kids. Oh Lord, it's so hard to know what to do. But that brings me up to my next my um, my first app and website um you know before you go you never really th think about this stuff until you know now we're in this climate crisis where it's changing so much that before you go to a destination you might want to look up what the air quality is oh yeah and i mean i have people who might be have, are clueless they don't look at the weather or don't look at anything or the news and they're going to san francisco this week this is not the week to be in the bay area or portland or la california in general so I would recommend looking up the air quality. And so there's a couple sites. One is airnow.gov, which is run by the government. And I live by, by the beach. Here right now, it says in, in right by LAX, it's a hundred and it's on, it's on unhealthy. 160, according to their yeah. AQI. Yeah. And, Terrible. And compare that to New York City. New York City right now is an eight. Who would have thought but, the air would be better in New York City than it is on the beach in L.A.? Right. Well, I, and I also use an app called um, IQ Air, Air Visual. And this one's for worldwide. The, the U.S. one I just mentioned, that's just for a U.S. destination. So if you're going to travel internationally, I mean, Bangkok, I was just looking it up, was like, was it like a nine? I'm like, what? Bangkok? Um, so that just gives you an idea how bad the air is now and... And you don't really want to be somewhere where they have bad pollution. So I would I would highly recommend um, looking up the pollution before you pl when you're planning a trip and see what it's like. Because a lot of destinations, you know, are notorious for for terrible air and things like that. Especially mm -hmm. if you have some kind of um, respiratory disease or, or problem. I don't know which site you use. If you ever do use them, I know like weather.com. They'll give you the I use the purple AQI at the purple bottom. air because uh, purple. Yep. Uh, it has local sensors. And honestly, at least around here, we don't know. Like I said, Apple's telling me what the weather is like in a town 30 miles away. That's what they're using for their AQI. And right. so it says 163, but that's in Sebastopol, not in Petaluma. So I need to, and I have it on my watch just in case. But I, So when I go to Purple Air, I can check the sensor from the elementary school down the block. And do you and, think that's accurate? Because I was looking at Purple Air, and, and, and they're just so different. All, all these different sites, they're not, they're not 
matched evenly. I mean, I think I know purple is not hyper local, so that's what I care about. In fact, I ordered a purple sensor for the house because that's what I'm really going to do is just say, because well, I, I want to know what it is right outside my window. Right. And uh, before I open the, I want to know whether I can open the windows. So right now, uh, according to Purple uh, Air, it's about a hundred. It's about the same, actually. It's about 176 in Petaluma. It varies, but I can see all the local sensors, and they range from 211 downtown, 275, which is the one and nearest I, us. I didn't realize it goes all the way up to 500. Yeah, I've never seen 500, but I. No, but according to. Uh, According to uh, Kim Schaffer, she saw, what did you say, Kim, 300? I think she saw uh, th 400. She said it was over 400 uh, in uh, San in, uh, Marin uh, this week. Yeah, you, yeah. It's, you know, when you see that dark red, right. <laughs> then you go, I guess I'll stay in. Well, I, I, call, I actually contacted uh, Nest this morning, Google Nest, and they actually did a great job on Twitter. You call the number and they say, we're not, we're not. We're not in the office. So contact us via Twitter or DM on Facebook. And, you know, sure enough, within a few minutes, they responded. And, you know, I was asking them, you know, what's the best way to keep the, the you know, the bad air out? And they just said, you know, run it with the, run your fan, run the fan function. And that's what we're doing. It right all now. kind of depends a lot on your HVAC, how much fr fresh air is brought in and mixed in. Right. And what kind of filtering you have on it. And it's all very complicated, and I don't think most people know. I don't know what you know what level of of uh, herb filtering I've got on my HVAC. Well, that's what um, they asked me. They asked me what kind of which, which kind of HVAC do I have, and I'm like, there's like five different types. Yeah, yeah. So, so then after I told him, he's like, just run it on the fan. So yeah. Uh, so there's a minimum efficiency reporting value, MERV which is the rating for your filtration in your HVAC. But do you know what your MERV is? I don't. You can get better filters. You can get HEPA filters, which have a better MERV rating. But then it's also a question of how much fresh air is ducted in. It's all complicated, isn't it? And so, you, it But it, to, to bring it back to travel, you're right. That's probably an interesting point is don't fly somewhere where the air isn't better because you're stuck I there. Mean, for sure. I mean, don't come. Let me put it this way. Don't come to San Francisco right now. Yeah, you, you don't. I'd stay away from the whole uh, West Coast if I were you. And, the, and I was looking at places where we can go without quarantine for two weeks. Where can you so go? So that's another problem. That's, and that's the big thing with travel right now. A lot of people are not traveling because they don't want to quarantine. You have to stay in the in U.S. pretty much, don't you? No, I mean, different states are different. Um, can you go outside actually, the U.S. anywhere? Oh, I'm sorry? Can you go? Can, can you as an American go somewhere yes. outside the U.S. without oh, quarantining? Sure. I think there, I think there's a no, no. You're going to have to quarantine pretty much everywhere. I, Turkey, you don't have to. Uh, Croatia, you didn't. You I'm not to, sure I'd want to go somewhere where they're not quarantined. Well, you have to take tests. You have to do the PCR test. Oh, okay. Usually within the last 72 hours, That's you have to fair. show that you have not. That's fair. Um, but some places require the, the quarantine anyway. But... Um, one place, actually, United Airlines has a site they just came out with, I think it was this week, where they show you a, a map of the United States. You click whatever state you're thinking about going to, and it will tell you what the rules are for each state. So you could uh, fly to a state and they would say you, when you get off the plane, okay, now you got to go stay in a hotel for two weeks? That uh, could happen? Only Hawaii really does Hawaii's right the only now. one, okay. But a lot of them are, you know, they tell you like New York City or New York. When you land in New York, you have to fill out a form and they will follow up on you. I've had friends where they will actually call and find out if you're there or, or just show up and they'll find you. But Hawaii is the strictest out of them all right now. So apparently uh, you can drive if you're a, uh, an American in the lower 40, lower f f whatever, 48, and you want to go to Alaska, Canada will let you drive through, but you can only stop for gas. <laughs> You've got to keep on going. Well, that's because they were, um, people were, keep on moving. They were, um, violating it. I'm actually, I'm putting, I just put in the chat room, the link to United Airlines to the map. So you can see all the different places that they have. It's fascinating, isn't it? Which, which is which good information right now. Because when do you think this is good? When do you think? No one knows, right? But when do you think I want to go on a cruise again? I know the cruise lines are starting it's not, up. It's not going to happen until the spring. I mean, in Europe, you can do some, but in the U.S., for sure, it's not going to happen. And what will it be like on one of those boats? Will I have to stay in my room? No, no, no. No, no one wants to do it. No one's going to spend money to they'll, do stuff They'll like test that. me getting on. It's going to be rapid testing. They need to have rapid, accurate testing. 
and they're going to do it often. So I think on cruise ships, when you get on, when you get so, off at different ports. So they're going to stick something up your nose every 15 minutes? No, what? be saliva-based, I think. Spit here. Okay. We'll see. I mean, Dubai right now actually has it. I have it written down. They, they just started using dogs that can sniff if you have COVID. Oh, I don't Which, think so. I, I don't. I don't know how it happens, but they. they <laughs> that Dubai seems like wishful the thinking. To deploy coronavirus We've got COVID dogs. dogs. They wow. say it's a ninety-two percent accuracy rate. Wow, Dubai had a big break, outbreak. I remember, but uh, maybe the things are better there. I'm just gonna stay home if you don't mind, Johnny Jet. You'll find. Uh, you know, it's fun to read about travel, think about travel. My, my, my wife and I, every uh, night, say, where are we going to go first? We spend a lot of time. JohnnyJet.com, that's the place to go. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Lisa, say, where are we going first? And I'll say, oh, well, people, I want to go to Asia. Now, all she the said, tourism no, boards. We're going to Paris first. All the tourism boards, including California, they're now coming out with these ad campaigns where they're having people plan you start start planning now because they don't a lot of them don't even want you here or want you to their places so now they're saying that they're all their ads are like you know what even the u.s travel association just came out with an ad that's there you know plan for the future and that's what they want people to do because <laughs> you know the present ain't so hot <laughs> it's not hot and they i mean people realize it. it's not even fun a lot of hotels you know they, they're very limited they don't have restaurants open or if they're offering breakfast, it's like usually a, a like a cold snack box sandwich. Um, so it's not the experience you usually get. So, so are you going to go somewhere with your fam? No, because I just you know we, we would have gotten a car and driven to San Diego or Santa Barbara, but the air all around California it's not better. You can't. Y and we thought about going to Hawaii, but again, no, we hit the quarantine for not two weeks. Not work. In Hawaii's so, and I was thought thought about just going to see my dad, but. What yeah, about Canada? Oh, you can't. No, we were definitely going to go to Canada. We're actually been debating on it anyway to be there around the election. Can she go? But, um, I we mean, can, we can go. I can go too. But, but just, you get quarantine. quarantined. Okay. Because my wife's Canadian, I can go. So, yeah, that might not be a bad idea because I but think the air is pretty clear. Quarantine. She's from Toronto, right? She is. Yeah. There's, it's, although patio uh, weather is ending. So weather. It's, it's over. So it, it is ending. It's getting cold. Gets cold yeah. early in Toronto. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, listen, I'm not a big. I love Toronto. I just I'm not a fan of the cold weather. No, that's my problem. I would love. Autumn I would love to live in Canada. Maybe Vancouver. It doesn't get quite as cold in Vancouver. No, it does. Definitely I like Vancouver, much, but I don't like a lot of rain. It's, yeah. it's cloudy a lot in Vancouver, but it's a beautiful city, and it, it's just. I like California. I, love I California. do too, but I don't know what it's going to be like in the long term. If we have fires like this, it's only going to take a couple more years. That's the thing. I'm, on, I'm waiting for one year without fires that we're going to sell the house real quick. Right. <laughs> and get the hell well, out. We, we thought about this and we, we talked about it. My wife's like, I, I don't know if I want to live here. With, with, you know, well, you're safe there. Going you're on. not going to have a fire there. No, we're not worried about the fire. But the, the smoke, smoke is not good. No. Do you think this will no. be if it's every if it's if it's every you know summer from now on? That's no good. I mean, it's a it's a climate crisis. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not it's it's getting worse. Yeah. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Have a great week. You too, Johnny Jet. Have a good week, and we'll talk again next. Take care. Take care. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Professor Laura, our musical director, gave me uh, two choices. She said, Billy Joel or Billy Idol? <laughs> and I said, really? It has to be one of those? She said, yes. I said, Idol. But this is good. This is a good song. There's some good Billy Joel songs, too. Actually, I, I should have just said Billy Eilish. Then, then we'd be okay. Bad man. Bad man. 8888-ASK-LEO. Lori, I'm wearing a white shirt and everything. Lori in San Clemente's next. Hello, Lori. Hi. Oh, great. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks for hanging it. on. Welcome. Oh, you're welcome. So I just need a basic laptop. I'm going to be searching the web, sending emails. I might, oh, working on Word. Um, I might take some classes. I may work from home for work, but 
I could get a computer from work, too. Right. I don't know if I'll be doing that. If I do work from work, it would be accessing cloud-based database, um, um, cloud-based document management databases. Okay. Can, do you do that in the browser, or do you have to have special software to do that? I would be connecting to somebody else's cloud, like Relativity or some type of program. Okay, so but you would have to run that program locally, is that right? Um, yes. Okay. Um, so that means you have to have a Windows machine for work. Right. Yeah, because everything else you don't need a Windows machine for. Word, you said Word, but, but I think you really mean just word processing, not necessarily Microsoft Word, or not. Well, I kind of wanted Microsoft Office, you know, the yeah. Word. and There's yeah. a web-based, actually very good, I think. Microsoft does a good job with their web-based version of Office. But, oh, okay. yeah, but that one, so if you had a separate work computer, I would say get a Chromebook because these are less expensive and more secure and would do all of those things you just described. But if you have to run Windows programs, you have to have a Windows computer. Yeah. I'm, um... I think there are really a handful of names to consider. HP is, of course, the one of the biggest names. Dell, Lenovo, all three of those would be fine. Um, I have a Dell XPS 13, very happy with it. I have heard Dell's having some quality control issues, but, you know, they stand by the computer, so if there's something wrong with it, you can get it replaced. I think HP makes very nice, thin, uh, light laptops with excellent battery life. I think they're very good. And Lenovo is more like the truck. Lenovo is, and I'm a kind of a Lenovo fan because they're, the old ThinkPads are really built to like, like tanks. So um, it's kind of the personality of the computer is slightly different. HP is more elegant. Dell is more workday business. And, uh, and Lenovo is more like <laughs> military spec. Uh, I think I would actually these days maybe look at the Lenovo IdeaPad, which is not a ThinkPad, but they make a very nice, less expensive, and I think it's quite nice. Uh, there are some other then kind of off choices, kind of uh, outlier choices like Asus and Acer. Those are time Ty both Taiwanese companies that make excellent laptops. Uh, I don't, I don't, th I don't think you can go wrong. It's just kind of more what you want. Do you want something that's pretty, or do you want something that looks like a tank? <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. But, but the different versions of that, because there are just so many, like HP. I mean, what? well, there are. There are lots of versions. So with the HP, uh, I think. Again, if you look at the HPs, here's the thing to keep in mind: almost all these brands have both a business kind of high-end line, a professional maybe for want of a better word line, and a consumer line. The consumer line's cheaper, and usually that means, in fact always that means, cheaper components, less reliable, less tough. So if, if really you got to save money, and I know nowadays a lot of us do, uh, then you're going to get the consumer. But if you can afford it, I always get the professional line. Those will be better made, more reliable, just more satisfying to use. So whenever you go to a site like HP's site, try to understand, and it's you know you can almost do it by price, which is the consumer line and which is the professional line. I think HP, Dell, and Lenovo, all three have strong professional lines that I would feel very comfortable with. I wouldn't have any problem with those. I'm 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 a fan of uh, the H. I have an HP Spectre. Yeah, they ha they call those the premium. But they also have uh, they have a business model as well. Um, it just really comes down to how much you want to spend. I think the the HP uh, Spectre line is a, is among the most beautiful laptops with the best battery life out there. So, uh, but it, but they're a little more pricey, right? Do you have a do you have a um, a budget? Yeah, not quite, yeah, I haven't really quite decided. That was going to be my next question yeah, to you. Yeah. So. What so I'm looking at a Spectre, for instance, the X360, beautiful. Uh, this is a i7, which is a high-end. A lot of times in laptops, the i5 is preferable because the i7 gets so hot, you never get to run it at that full speed. This one, 
because it's the premium, comes with its own dedicated graphics card and NVIDIA GeForce. It comes with 16 gigs of memory. I would recommend that on anything you buy. Uh, it's a little bit of a small hard drive. It's 256 gigs. I would look at, depending on what you're, you know, how much data you're going to store locally, I would look at at least 512 and maybe even a terabyte. But the but the the base model of the 360 is 1,350 bucks, which is I think the, about the right price point for a, a quality computer. I wouldn't want to spend much less than a thousand. Okay. Is that is that unless it's outside your budget, in which case. You yeah, know. like I said, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, because I'm thinking long term, and I, yeah, exactly. Want to start kind of getting ideas of what would be best. I'd say if you're going to spend for me. I might as well a, get something yeah. great. But I, but I know for me, I'm not going to do gaming. I don't really need. A, I don't have really a lot of needs for yeah. it. But I want to get something that is. I would get okay. I'm going to spend your money. Get, get this HP Spectre. It's beautiful. It's coppery. It's got nice hinges. It's got a great screen. It is a very nice laptop. You can use a pen with it. You know, touch is important if you're going to use Windows. Um, I, I think that's an X. It's a little pricey. It's, you know, 1200 I think, though, for what you're, where you want, you should consider you're going to be spending between twelve and 1400 bucks. Oh, okay. Gaming would be more. Right, high end would be more, but I th and and you know that's for something that's pretty that looks nice. I like to carry, uh, and by the way, I'm not being sexist here. I like a laptop to look good, but if you don't care, you know I think the the Dells are very gray and boring, but they're very, but the hardware is fine. Really, what you really care about is the quality of the screen. Uh huh. Yeah. That's and the keyboard. By the way, that's one reason I like. Lenovo ThinkPads, they have the best keyboards on the market. They're really good. Uh -huh. And so if keyboard's important to you, the HPs are, are, are kind of a short travel. They're not, they're not a nice keyboard feel. The Dells and the Lenovos are better for that. So that's why every laptop is a trade-off. You know, some things you give on one for, you know, to get something on the other. And it, the trade-offs have to match your... I'm thinking you probably want a good keyboard, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, if 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 you don't mind, if it looks a little chunky and blocky, um, I would look at a, a, a Lenovo IdeaPad or a ThinkPad. Okay. Um, those are excellent. You can you know you can kind of choose the price because they range depending on what you put in them. They're very customizable. They're the most customizable. Um, oh. And ThinkPads are kind of ugly. They're kind of ugly, uh, but they're ugly in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> they're ugly like a like a good old hound dog that does the job. Ugly. They're not. They're not. Uh, they're not styling. Um, yeah. I have a bunch of black, you know, carbon fiber body, you know, Lenovo ThinkPads, and they're, they just go and they go and they go. They're very very reliable. And then how about for the screen? Just something that's really easy. <sighs> So I think don't get a 4K screen because that's going to kill battery life and you're not watching 4K movies on it. You can get 1080p, but get a good quality 1080p touch screen if you can. And I like glossy. I don't like the matte screens. I think the colors are better on the glossy screens as long as you can control the light behind you. Oh, okay. And as of the three HP Dell Lenovo, is there... All three have excellent screens. You're going to... You, what you'll see when you go there to configure it is you'll have a choice. And you could say, I want the high-end screen, I want the low-end screen. Get a touch screen. I think that's important nowadays. But you don't need the 4K. Oh, okay. And then also a router for... It's just like home use. I live in a condo, so it doesn't need to be... Uh, the Ace, if you just want a single standalone router, the Asus, A-S-U-S, -S, routers are excellent. Oh, okay. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. We took you shopping. This oh, is, you did? Yeah, we took you that's shopping. Great. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, good. it's hard, you know, it's tough <laughs> because it's overwhelming. There's a lot of information out there. Uh-huh. The thing you're going to want, you're going to want 16 gigs of RAM. Don't get less, okay? You don't need more, but 16. You want an SSD for the hard drive. And, and, and ideally, you want 
an NVME SSD. <laughs> a lot of letters. Oh, Those are the NVME is the is this is uh, yeah. the uh, the interface, and an M.2 NVME is is the fastest SSD. Although, it, if if it's a lot more than then you can get a regular SSD. But the SSD is critical. That's a big deal for speed. If you're getting a decent uh -huh. laptop, uh, you'll be good. And then um, screen is you're going to have to. The, uh, a lot of times with these, let me just look at the idea pad here real quickly. A lot of times with these, you have to get the 4K to get touch, which kind of frustrates me. Because the problem with 4K, it's a lot of dots, which you probably don't need, and it kills battery life. Oh. So let me look here. Oh, yeah, don't get the idea pad 100. That's too cheap. You're going to get a higher end, like a 700 series idea pad here we go high performance easy portability um this is a little bit more down their consumer line but it's but i think they're really uh, nice laptops they have good keyboards um idea pad 15 inches oh that's the other thing how big is do you want it so the screen size is the average is typical is uh, 14 inches but you can get smaller and you can get bigger I would say 14 is what you want. Okay, 14 inches. Yeah. Uh, but but if you're doing a lot of um, spreadsheet work or something where you need a lot of screen, mm -hmm. one thing you could always do is get an external monitor that you leave at home. Uh, yes. And then that would give you... So then you can get something a little lighter and slimmer, but when you're at home, you know, you can, you can get a bigger view. So you do a lot of spreadsheets. Well, I look at a lot of documents, so I like having the... Yeah, more... Yeah, 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 yeah. So, But the good news is an external monitor is just a few hundred bucks. They're not expensive. Oh. Okay. And all of these will drive an external monitor. No problem. Oh, okay. And even though it says, like, idea pad, think pad, that's just, that's just the same as a PC. I mean... They're all PCs. They're brand names, but they tell you something just like Buick versus, you know, like a LeSabre oh. versus a Regal. They tell you something about that. So the ThinkPads are the tough guys, business, very focused on business, but they're their high end. I think the ThinkPads are, if you can afford a ThinkPad, that's what I would get. Oh. Step down, less expensive, maybe not quite as high quality, but still very good are the idea pads. And this, the new Slim 7, which is about 1200 bucks, is very nice. Very nice. Um, I would say it has all of the things that you would want. Uh, well, okay, but if you want 16 gigs, it's, yeah, it's 1200 bucks. It's an i7. Um, you know, you don't really need that. 14-inch 1080p screen, nice screen, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte solid-state drive, a GeForce card, so it's got good graphics. So that's the that's the that's the idea pad. Slim Seven. I think that's a very nice one, and it's twelve hundred nine dollars right now. Oh, okay. That's for in, That's kind of where you're at, kind of. I would say. Okay, and then for because it's been a long time since I've had a computer at home. Um, do do they come with Microsoft Office and Windows installed? They come with Windows, not with Office. Oh, sorry. Office now is a subscription. The good news about Office is if you get the person Office personal subscription, it's seventy bucks a year. It's cheap. Oh, okay. And you get a terabyte of one drive storage for that, cloud storage. So I think that that's a pretty good deal. I would just, and they'll give you a card that gives you a, a limited trial. Sometimes it's three months, sometimes it's a year, depending on the manufacturer. But it's uh, seven bucks a month. I think it's, I think that's well worth it. If you, you say you're going to use Office, do you use uh, Excel? Sometimes. Sometimes. I'm mostly from Mostly online. Word? Mostly Word. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh, well, great. No, thank you so much. I really Oh, my it. pleasure, Lori. Have fun. <laughs> okay, thank you. You too. You get to work from home. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> yes, oh, it is. Oh, <laughs> man. Well, you, the good news is you save money on clothing. Uh -huh. and my yeah. wife just wears tops. She doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she wears stretch pants and tops. You know, be comfortable. <laughs> yeah. All right, Lori. And I hope... Yeah, have a great rest of the day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, bye. Well, hey, hey, hey. How are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. 
Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smartwatches, all that jazz. Phone number if you want to talk to me, 8888, and talk to me in the world, 8888-ASK-LEO, 888-827-5536. That's uh, toll-free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Our website, where everything goes, all the answers and the questions, techguylabs.com. No sign up, no fee, it's free. Uh, techguylabs.com. That's a good thing to remember. That's all you need to remember, really. Everything else is uh, is, is there. Um, good article in PC Magazine this week. As if there's a magazine. <laughs> there's, uh, there's. I don't think there's a magazine, but online anyway. PC Mag, I guess we call it now. A good, good article in PC Mag by uh, Sasha Segan, who is really good at this kind of thing. Every year they do uh, testing like they drive all over the country to test mobile networks. They literally go to 26 cities with their smartphones in hand and test them. This year, of course, they're testing the latest mobile network, 5G, the latest technology, fifth generation. The problem with 5G is it's a marketing term. It doesn't really mean a whole lot technically. It implies that they're, but it doesn't have to be that they're using new technologies uh, at the 600 megahertz range and in the millimeter wave range. That's the two different kinds, the low band and the high band. Um, AT&T uses a kind of 5G that isn't really 5G, called 5GE, which is really enhanced 4G. But here's the thing. And, the, and in order to do this, of course, you have to have the latest phones that support 5G. Most phones don't. Most of the phones you buy from now on will. But 5G doesn't make a whole lot of difference for anybody. And in fact, in some cases, AT&T, the 5G is actually slower than their 4G. If you want speed and you can find a little corner of New York City or one of the few cities where it's available, you, you can get very fast 5G service on Verizon. Very fast, as fast as two gigabit. That's fat, and that's faster than your home, probably, right? Uh, but the problem is, it's only you have to be in a very specific area. It's very limited, and this is this is the, it's marketing, because remember all the ads we saw on the NF the NFL last year about how. Verizon 5G was at the going to be in all the football stadiums. Well, you can't go. I mean, <laughs> okay, but it did. What didn't even cover the whole football stadium? It was at a corner in one part of the football stadium, because this technology Verizon is using millimeter wave doesn't travel well at all, and it will be stopped by anything. A light mist, <laughs> and it stops working. It's so high frequency. That it really is, you know, a very limited availability. Now, T-Mobile's using this low band, 600 megahertz, but it's not faster. So, so I guess the reason I bring this up, and it's worth reading, PCMag.com, no paywall. The reason I bring it up is there is, and this is their conclusion too, there is no reason to rush out and get a new phone with 5G in it. There's just no benefit to it at all. Now, this probably is similar to what happened with LTE when it 4G, when it first came out. It took a while. And maybe 5G will... But I think there's some technical hurdles that really mean 5G isn't going to be like, oh, you got to have it. For a long time, if at all. So uh, if, you're, if you're curious, really a good... Uh, right up they went everywhere checked everything 26 cities and by the way if you're not in a city forget about it <laughs> we may never get uh, 5g in my small town our 5g results sasha writes were disappointed disappointing all around on every carrier on every carrier AT&T 5G right now appears to be essentially worthless. T-Mobile 5G can be a big boost over 4G, but its speeds are only what we'd expect from a good 4G network. It isn't a new experience. Verizon's 5G is often mind-blowing, but very difficult 
to find. <laughs> bottom line. That's the bottom line. Now you know. Don't run out and buy a new phone just because you want 5G. I don't think that's ever going to be. I think it's, you know, marketing. Marketing. Let's go to Tulare. Amy Rose is on the line. Hi, Amy Rose. Hello, Mr. Leo. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Magical. Absolutely magical. Thank you, sir. Good. What can I do for you? So, um, I am a teacher, second grade teacher. We have been... Thank you. Thank uh -huh. you. Thank you. No, it's you're at the age where you're teaching kids to read, aren't you? Yes, sir. That's a, that's yes, such sir. an important job. Thank you, Amy Rose. I know it's We're tough trying. right now. I know. Yeah. It's very trying. It is. Um, my question is, though, um, we're designed to go back to school. They make us go back into the classroom. There's about 40 teachers on campus, aides and such. We've been dropped. Our Zoom calls are dropped consistently. Um, you have to go to the school to do the Zoom calls? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> The problem is um, we keep getting dropped. So you we probably have a better result if you stayed home. You know that, right? Oh, most definitely. Yeah, but, okay. You know, <laughs> some people didn't do the right thing at the last time. It's so, the rules. It's know, just the rules. I understand. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Every school district has to figure it out, and I have huge respect for the, all the teachers and the administrators. This is a very tough time. Well, and you're darned if you do, and you're darned if you don't. That's right. So, and the parents everybody. probably are driving you nuts right now. <laughs> oh, well. Those, some of those, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, my problem is, is that we keep getting dropped. So they had a third party come in and talk to uh, um, the classrooms that were being dropped. We all have our own independent Wi-Fi source, our hub in our classrooms up high on the ceilings. Good. The gentleman came in and said, you, need, you all need to remove your cordless phones. That's what's interfering and in dropping your calls, your Zoom calls. I did research. I looked online. The last article I can find that has any remote connection to that is 2011. Yeah, no, I don't no. think so. No. Mike, so... It, I mean, uh, you don't... I guess, you. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could put your phone in uh, Wi-Fi mode or, I mean, uh, air, airplane mode, or, you know, this might help turn off Wi-Fi on your phones. Well, some of us are using it as a hotspot, but that's not... He's telling us our cordless phones. Oh, the cordless phones, not the cell phones. No, sir. Oh, yeah, the cordless phones. Okay, yeah, that could be. It depends on the phone. Some cord it depends on the frequencies. Some cordless phones operate at the same frequencies and could be interfering. That's true. Right, because I looked it up, or, and you know more than I do, but it, one of them was uh, 2.4. Yeah, the old that would interfere. So and some cordless I, phones are at 900 megahertz. That wouldn't. But those that are 2.4 would. Okay, so he's right. Okay. That's what I'm trying to find. But when we were in, we had phones for a good five. I've been teaching for 22 years, and I've had mine for at least 12 years. Yeah. And we have a class, 25 kids in our classroom, plus a teacher, all on Chromebooks, all working diligently. And there's been no problems with dropping. So maybe there are other problems. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's just you and Zoom, right? Correct. One person Correct. on Zoom. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's good that the school district brought in a consultant. Yes. It is the case that the cordless phones could be problematic, but it sounds like from what you just said, there may be other problems as well. Correct. I just want to be able to... I'm the tech lead on our campus. So oh, I see. So people come, come to me and they're trying, you know, and we have meetings for the tech leads. And I just want to have all my ducks in a row. When Amy I, Rose is know. the expert. So, no, uh, not. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it is the case that 2.4 gigahertz phones, and you should look and see if the brand you're using are 2.4 gigahertz phones. Those can interfere. It's the same frequency. So okay. that is the case. Anything at that frequency, 2.4 or 5 could interfere. Okay. Um, but it sounds like there's other problems, too, because you were able to have a classroom with everybody on Wi-Fi, 40 kids on Wi-Fi, no problem. Correct. Now, remember that Zoom is going to be more demanding than just sitting there on your Chromebook looking at a website. Correct. Because if the, if the website stops for five seconds and then finishes, you might not even notice. But if that happens on a Zoom call, that's a dropped call. Right. And then I'm leaving... 12 kids in a room without a teacher. Exactly. Ooh. So streaming is a more demanding thing. 
Yes. It, it's okay. probably the case that you could improve your Wi-Fi, but it might require getting new gear. So the gear that you're... How old is that Wi-Fi system? It's probably fairly old, right? Actually, it's within the past two years. Oh, good. All right. So that was, you know... So, the, so the, this is a complicated problem because it could be the computer, it could be the bandwidth that you're getting, it could be the okay. Wi-Fi system. Wi-Fi interferes with other Wi-Fi, so interference is a problem. Wasn't a problem in the past, but remember, you weren't streaming video. That's a much more hard, much complicated thing to do, much more demanding, right? Right. So right. it could be all of that. Um, did the guy look at anything else or just say, hey, it's the phones? That's about what he said. He went into each classroom. Even people who didn't even have cordless phones said the exact, he said the same thing. Oh, well, he wasn't. He said, well, your neighbor that went is like, four doors down, they have a cordless phone, so it's, interact it's interfering. Well, it certainly isn't helping, no. but I would honestly, a better tech would come in and would do more testing on the actual network, would use a Wi-Fi signal tester, but would also use a packet sniffer. He'd be doing more. Did he hook up any gear to the network at all? No, sir. And he didn't do anything. No. He guessed. <laughs> it's a good guess. But I that's what I'm getting to. Yeah. He guessed. But there's a lot, but you can, there, <laughs> anybody, know, you know, you need to, what you need, uh, honestly, probably in your area, well, I don't know. There may be a parent who is a tech person who works in IT, preferably. If you can find a parent, that's what you need. You need a volunteer, a parent volunteer. The problem is a lot of them will pretend, will be like this guy. Go, I know what's wrong. You want somebody who's really competent. You know, he works at, 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 on, on you want, you ideally would be a networking IT guy who works with networking because he'll have the gear and the knowledge to, to really go in there with a meter, signal meter, look at what's going on, to check the, the, the Ethernet to each room. He'll, he could tell you exactly what it is instead of guessing. Perfect. That's I kind of know a person just like that. Oh, good. So that's even better. I'd bring in the parent, a, par a smart parent. Mo by the way, that's what's happening in most schools. Perfect. Right? You gotta you, you find a volunteer, somebody in your area who knows what he's doing. There's tech companies in your area, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, find somebody like that, or maybe somebody I don't know. Maybe there's a military installation nearby. There's got to yes. be somebody who really knows what they're doing who can help you because I think there's another problem I think you nailed it and I don't think the cordless phones are certainly potentially a problem and I would try it and see if it fixes things they're not you the cell phones are different the cordless phones though yeah I, I misunderstood those could be a problem yeah perfect oh yeah. and by the way if yeah. you have Zoom, if you have Zoom's ear, can you tell them that we need clickable links in the chat for kids on Chromebooks yes of course you do on Chromebooks we of need that. Of course you do. So you can send a link and they can click on it. Of course you do. And they don't do that. They oh, Zoom. That. <laughs> you should look at Blue Jeans, which is really designed for teaching. Oh, I've never heard of that one. Yeah, there are other. Is it Big Blue Button or Blue Jeans? I'm trying to remember. Our friend Chris Marquardt uses it on his okay. Photo Sensei uh, uh, site. Um, and it is a design for pedagogy. It is designed, to, and it will have clickable links, for instance, because Zoom, remember, is a business. The problem with Zoom is it's a business um, tool. It's not, and unfortunately, we're all stuck right. with, uh, you know, doing school with business tools. <laughs> and, and the clickable links would be one example of the kind of thing, obviously, any classroom you're going to go, oh, yeah, I know. Yes. Right, but... Uh, but maybe um, maybe uh, that's not the perfect tool. I'm trying to find. I'm looking at uh, Chris's site to see what tool he's using. It was is it Blue Jeans or is it Black? You know, it's not Blackboard. Verizon bought Blue Jeans. I don't. You know, uh, there are there. I'll, you. You put it in your website. I'll put it in the website because I'll find it. There are tools like Zoom that are more designed for school. And that's yeah. kind of what you want. Um, we were, when we did it, I'm, I'm under the assumption is they were trying to find something that was an easy platform to introduce parents. Well, it's the, it's the no-brainer, right? Right. Uh, it's the easy one. <laughs> right. If so, Google wasn't. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Meetings, meeting isn't probably right either. Uh, teams isn't right. Those are all they're all business focused. You want something that's focused for the classroom, I think. Yes, sir. So um, that's that's what I would go with. I'm just looking on Chris's site to see if I can. Bigbluebutton.org. Big blue button. All right. Well, Big bu you so Could you change if you were the tech lead and you said, hey, no, let's try no, this? <laughs> no, you can't change it. The district no. decides that probably, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, well. But if I, if this continues, then we have another one. Another. You know what, Amy on. Rose, you are doing God's work. You are teaching <laughs> children how to read, how to be in the world, how to learn, how to enjoy life. You are doing the most important job that can be done. And you're educating us, so thank you. I well, thank I you I wish I could support you more, but I'm just so grateful to what you're doing. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Have a magnificent day. You too, Amy Rose. Thank you. There's a I see that bumper sticker. If you can read, thank a teacher. You remember the teacher who taught you to read? You remember the first time you could look at a book and read? That's a big deal. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. If you've got a question, a comment, a suggestion, I would love to hear from you. 8888-ASK-LEO. BigBlueButton.org is a web conferencing system designed for online learning. Period. That's what it says. And uh, so I think Zoom is like, well, everybody uses Zoom because everybody uses Zoom. It's like Windows. Everybody uses Windows because everybody uses Windows. Is it the best? No. But it is what everybody uses. So I think that's what happened. More of your calls coming up in just a sec. I do I do like the the book form factor of it. And I think the Kindle on it is just awesome. Oops. I got string this up. And, and you do you do have to learn a new way of um, of, of thinking about things, but um, so I'm learning some of the things. I find uh, I still get stalls sometimes for some reason. I'm not sure why, where nothing responds. Um, yeah, I understand that. Switching from apps does not always work. Yep, yep, yep. I, that's the biggest problem I've had, where it's just stalled. I don't know what's going on. Um, eventually I figure, you know, I get it, I get it going. There's some, you know, obviously I want to see more programs designed to use this because, uh, you know, for instance, this would be a great crossword puzzle program if, <laughs> if it would work right. <laughs> but, you know, it kind of doesn't. So cl it's so close, though. This also happens, but this happens with everything. It's, I don't know. I have a stuck accelerometer or something. <laughs> I like the fingerprint reader. I think that's nice. Um, it's a very, very, very expensive book reader. <laughs> I think it's going to get, it's going to absolutely get better um, once, I think there'll be a few software updates that'll help. I'm going to move this back here. The other thing is, it's, it's just, um, this form factor it's a little weird. It takes a little getting used to. It's not as natural as holding a phone, but uh, and you, I don't, and the at all, you know, battery life is great. Camera is terrible. Obviously, you know that. I mean, look at that. I'm, who's that old man? But so now, if I flip this around 
There. Now it's a now it's a camera. So because there's only one camera, but that's all right. Whoops. I mean, that's it's at least whoops. <laughs> it's at least smart enough to do that. Like if it if they had a better camera, this would be a kind of mind-boggling way of thinking about photos. Yeah, I'm gonna. It's my gonna be my full-time phone for for a while. I'm using it with Verizon. Uh, the keyboard experience could be. I feel like. So tell me how to do that, Lou. Um, so now, in theory, if I did this, how how do I get it so that the, it's a split screen? Do I have to go two wide screen and then get the keyboard open? Come on. Well, now this. Oh, there we go. And then do this. How do I get it? There we go. See, now that's a pretty. That's an interesting. This would be better if it worked, you know, a little bit better. Yes, she is. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Professor Laura, are you playing that for your mama? I think you are. Or my mama. My mama said, Why did you ever leave the East Coast? She just texted me. She said, Can you breathe? Why did you ever leave the East Coast? Mom. Mom, I left the East Coast 50 years ago. <laughs> it's not... <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen in 2020. I really didn't. Back in 1970, had no idea. 8888, ask Leo's the phone number. Let's go to line two. Glenn on the line from Winnetka, California. Hello, Glenn. Hello, Leo. Hello, Glenn. Uh, What's up? Uh, with my desktop, I'm periodically doing on-site backups by opening the case and plugging in spare hard drives. And I'm considering getting a Kingman hard drive power switch module so I can leave them in and just turn the power off to them. So when unpowered, are these backups immune from ransomware attacks? Yes. Only when unpowered, though. Right. The minute you plug it in, it suddenly may... Uh, the ransomware will go, aha. Now, here's something sneaky ransomware authors are doing. I don't think they're doing it to individuals. So you're, it's only for businesses, but businesses should be aware of this. Uh, and this is what happened has happened to uh, Canon, the camera company. I think it happened to Garmin as well. They get into the system first, and then they wander around... And look at all the backups, all the ways, and they put time bombs on them. <laughs> because they know if a so backup's offline, either turned off or just not connected, it's not going the ransomware is not going to affect it. Unless you saw that hard drive before, because you waited three months, mm -hmm. and you said, oh, good, I'm going to just put a little something on that so when they do plug it in, <laughs> it'll get encrypted too. Mm -hmm. So that's... That's why, but generally, the rule of thumb is an offline backup, whether it's disconnected or, in your case, powered down, is not vulnerable. Yeah. The minute you turn it on, all bets are off. So if you had ransomware, the thing's turned off, you go, oh, no, don't immediately turn it on. <laughs> now what you want to do is clean up the ransomware, and then you can turn it on and say, good, I got everything. Yeah. That makes sense, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I sure wish there was a way to block access to admin uh, mode via ma manual switch on my computer. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, then it shouldn't be that hard for them to do. Well, I mean, they have a software way of doing it, which is you use a limited user all the time. And if you ever need to be an admin, you have to type the password in. Well, yeah, and I, I do that. But I, I thought there were suspected backdoors to that even with... Well, there... Yeah, there are. It's called uh, those attacks are called privilege escalation attacks, and uh, the idea is the reason you would be a limited user is because th whatever malware is on your machine can only do what you, as a limited user, could do. So if you can't install software or access the hard drive in special places and so forth, it's limited. And so there, there's a lot of go you know Microsoft with its UAC kind of means you can run as an administrator, but if anything administrator-like needs to be done, you'll get a pop-up that says, hey, look, 
It doesn't make you enter the password anymore, but it says, hey, look, uh, we need to be administrator here. Is that okay with you? They think that's sufficient, you know, as long as you pay attention. The problem is most people just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get something done here. Don't bother me. But that's what UAC is for, is so you can run as an administrator and be warned when something an administrator would want to do can, is being done. But there's other ways to do it. Uh, on the Macintosh, they... You have to get permission to access folders. It'll say, hey, some, uh, this program wants to access your document folder. Is that okay? I think Microsoft will start implementing that as well, which I think is good. The idea is sl be speed bumps. You know, slow it down. Because right now, ransomware gets on your system and goes, eh, party. And it gets yeah. all over the place. One thing I would look at, an alternative to the Kingman, is you can also buy for desktop computers, and I used to use these little ejector bays that you could put a drive in, it's connected, and then when you've done the copy, you eject it. Well, I used to have them on my last computer. Oh, okay. This crummy little fan that's supposedly going to cool my hard drive <laughs> while I'm doing a major data. It's like... Wait a minute. I got these great fans, and probably that's the hardest thing you're going to do on yeah. it. Yeah. This is honestly why cloud backup is such a good idea for most people because it's slow because it's only it's limited by your bandwidth, right? And it doesn't want to take up all your bandwidth, so it's going to trickle it up there. But 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 it but it's always doing it. It's always backing it up. And a good solution like our sponsor, but there are other ones too that does snapshots. Then you're a little bit more safe from ransomware because. You can always roll back in time. So there are, look, at this is clearly an issue. In fact, it's such a, you would assume that Garmin and uh, Canon would have IT people competent enough to protect them from ransomware. Apparently not. Yeah. Apparently yeah. not. So uh, it's a problem. And uh, as the good news is the money is in attacking businesses, not individuals. Yeah. Individuals, those are kind of mass attacks, and they're easier to thwart. They're not going to be as, as uh, aggressive. But, boy, if you're a business, I'd be terrified. Well, I have a business. I'd be terrified right now because I ask my IT guy that every time I see him. Are we okay? Yeah. <laughs> are, you doing so are you doing stuff to protect us? Uh, and mo a lot of that involves protecting, uh, preventing malware from coming in through email. That's its the most common vector by a long shot. Well, I wish I could have something that was as dumb as Chromebook unless I pushed the button on my... I know. Wouldn't that be cool? And then why the heck can't they do that? That's a great question. Uh, you know, more sophisticated operating systems, Linux I'm thinking of, do have those kinds of features where you can, you know, you really can't do anything. <laughs> it's not a hardware switch. It's you enter a password. But I guess uh, a hardware switch. How would that work? That's an interesting. Now you got. Now you got me thinking. That might be a real opportunity. I think you should go out and make it happen, Glenn. <laughs> startup time, Glenn. That's why I'm listening to you. <laughs> I don't have a clue. <laughs> well, you sound like you know what you're doing. Hey, it's a pleasure talking to you. Stay safe. Thank you. All Thank right. You, Take okay, care. Okay, bye, bye. Yeah, KVM switch maybe. Um, I don't know. How could you make it so that? It's really hard for malware. See, if it's a switch, malware can't flip a switch. It's really hard for malware to to get the privileges it would need to, you know, password's one thing. But but he's right. I mean, his premise is if it's software, it can get something can get around it potentially. Hardware, no. Good. It's a good idea. It's a really interesting idea. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, the Gizwiz coming up right after this. Oh, yeah, you could do that. That's a good one. So the chat room's mentioning that you can set it up with a little effort, but you can set it up that you need a physical dongle, a YubiKey, to escalate. Instead of a password, you use a physical key. That would certainly be more secure. In fact, I've been meaning to do that. Uh, you can do that on... Mac, you could do it on, I'm pretty sure you can do it on Windows, right? You could do it on Linux. Um, and then, so in order, to, then what you would do is you operate as a, a lower uh, privileged user. But if you need to escalate, it'll say, okay, give me your key. 
That's a pretty good idea. That's the solution. It currently is tricky, complicated. And Bill in Michigan says it's still kind of a software switch, right? Because it's the software controlling it. Yeah, no, because Pam, you, if you could get around, I, th yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it's still the Pam software on your on the computer. But I think that'd be a lot harder, and that's certainly very hardened because it's the primary authentication method for, you know, some pretty serious guys. So I don't know. That's a good question. Show them how they do it. Dick D. Bartolo, our disco fool. He's dancing in on the lighted floor. Look at those amazing white bucks, the white pants, the wide open satin shirt with the cornu hanging over his hairy chest. He is a good looking man. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Dick D. Bartolo, Mad's I'm, maddest writer, and the Gizwiz. Wow, I'm out of breath. <sighs> thrilled to be here. You are the uh, uh, the man who saved the match game. Uh, you are 50 years Mad Magazine's maddest writer. But the thing we know and love him best for is he's our gizmo wizard, our gizwiz. And each week... Yes, that, that is the highlight of my career, <laughs> which just shows you That's how far down it's so gone. That's sad. <laughs> No, we, I have something, Leo. Yes, Get yes. your finger on the buy button. Oh, boy. Uh, it's cheap. Okay, it's cheap. Uh, so this is... Uh, so, Just want to tell you, case. I now have eight gooseneck lamps. I have so many okay. gooseneck lamps. So don't give me any more of those. Okay. I have 15 oh, of what we're talking about. Oh, okay? they're that good. Okay. Uh, okay. So about a month ago, I bought a little... Uh, three and a half inch uh, LED uh, mini flashlight. And what I liked about it, it is at the side, there's a task light. So if you want to lay it on a table or something, if you're scoring in a, a, a wires or something and there's no one there, it lights the area. Then something I don't need, it also has a built-in strobe and the front of the flashlight is focusable. And it, it was You know, it'd be dollars. nice six, if this had a little adhesive strip on it and a motion detector, so I could put it under my desk, and when I end up under my desk, it would light it up. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's it doesn't good. have that, though. Yeah. No? Uh, so, uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> then I got an email, deal of the day. Deal of the my day. flashlight. Yes. For $3.50. Practically half off. For, yeah, a, a buck fifty shipping, except free shipping if you buy three. So I bought three. Okay, yes, of course. And then I did it. I did it on the Gizwiz. And then Becky said, "Wait a minute! I just bought four for twelve dollars." <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, "Well, let me see if they're the same thing." So I bought those. Oh no! And then Amazon sent me an email. We have flashlights uh, you might like six for eighteen dollars. Oh, so I bought those. Oh okay. my god! Well, Leo, the fascinating thing is they're all slightly different. Even though in pictures and in size, they all look exactly the same. The the one that was $3.50, the built-in side task light is 30% bigger. So it gives off a bit more light. And it also has a little lanyard, and it also comes in a little plastic case. And I bought six of those for stocking stuffers. They're really great. And 500 milliamp rechargeable battery inside. Oh. And so it's it a rechargeable. A rechargeable. Oh. And it comes with a mini recharging cable. So you on your website, gizwiz.biz, you've got like eight different places I could buy this. What's yeah, the yeah. best deal? Well, the, the best deal is one that is not an affiliate link, but I always, I always put... Uh, what I think is the best buy up. I, I think the deal of the day, and I just bought three more an hour ago just to make sure they were still available. Uh, it, it comes to three fifty each. It has a lanyard. It has the biggest uh, side task light. It has the focusable uh, head uh, headlamp, and it comes in a little uh, carry case. So this is a rechargeable. I just plug this in. A rechargeable, I yes. like that idea. So I could leave it on the charger, but when I need it, 
boom. It's ready to go. Just pop it off. It's ready to go. Yeah. And I've already given three away. Every time someone comes in the door, I go, oh, I have a present for you. Just write your name on it, and it'll be your Giz Whiz giveaway. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> that's a great idea. I like the task light, because I often, like I said, I'm going under my desk, you know, and yeah. playing with wires and stuff all the time. And a flashlight's too pointy. I just want a broader beam. A, a bright light. Yeah. And also, I left one on the boat. They're, they're big enough to... You know, some of them come with a pocket clip instead of the uh, little lanyard. Uh, they're really handy. But how many do you and really expect, need? Oh, uh, no more than nine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so 15 was to give six away. <laughs> I need one. I need, I lose things and misplace them often. So I am better off when I have a flashlight almost on every end table. Yeah. So that yeah. if I don't see it, I turn around and, oh, it's, there's another one there. Oh, there's another one there. And then I have a giant flashlight to find those flashlights in the dark. What's the self-defense setting? The self-defense setting? It says, setting? also features a strobe signal self-defense setting. Oh, well, well, what they consider the defense thing is just to let the uh, let the strobe light go on. <laughs> okay, and, and that's going to scare it, them it, away, huh? To scare them away. You know, and, Halloween's like, coming. This would be good to give have one of these for all the kids. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so and, they all have a, a light. Note, uh, in the files that one of the three $3 wins does not have the strobe, but uh, all of that is pointed out. Oh, so you're buying a couple? I'm buying a few. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you don't get a more discount. So the lowest is three forty nine. That's at that yes, daily you buy, deal. You have to buy three to get uh, free shipping. Uh, so you definitely want three. You want at least three. Never, never order fewer than three. But you also, I have free shipping at Amazon. But the three dollar one, you get six of them. <laughs> and those six, they, I don't know. Someone said they uh, didn't come with the cases. My six, each one came in its own little plastic carry case. So if you if you're doing it on Amazon, that's a, a great way to do it. Uh, this is these are the ones with the clip. They have a smaller task light area, but the clip is nice because you can put it on your ear. Put it in your pocket, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or clip it on your cap. Look at that. It's just like a headlight. Oh, ooh. Now we're talking. And and that one also has the strobe in it. Uh, you mean the, the, the you mean the, the self defense the, light? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the self defense light. Okay, that's uh, eighteen dollars for six of them. Yeah, I think that's for Halloween. This is a good thing for all the kids to have a little, you know, light. You could clip it on the back of them so they don't know, but they'll be visible, and that's important. No, I think it's great. Yeah, I think it's great. And I and if you want to help Dickie D, click the link from the website. That makes it easy for you if you're buying on Amazon, but also uh, he gets a, I don't know, you get you get 12 cents. So that's nice. 12 cents, yeah. yeah that's nice. Gizwiz.biz is his website. Click the uh, Gizwiz Visits the Tech Guy button to see these this offer and all the other stuff, all the other junk he's talked about on the show. Oh, yeah, you were gonna, we were going to tell people what the what the heck is it was. Oh, and the what the heck is it game ended at the end of August, and uh, we didn't talk about it last week. Uh, today it's a Star Wars figure, but uh, what was it? Oh, it was the staple free stapler. Yes, it was and a paper crimp crimper. Exactly, and like eighty five people had. It. I got several emails saying, "Oh, Dick, your contest is really screwed now. It is uh, in the Walmart ad, a big oh. ad in today's paper." Oh, so. oh, but that's okay. Okay. So you gave away a bunch of Mad Magazines. Yeah. Let's hope Walmart does not sell this Darth Vader helmet. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, no. It clips onto your bicycle and keeps you from bumping your head because that's a nice rubber stopper. Wow, that's good. I'd send that in. <laughs> it's, a, it's a safety badminton birdie. Nice. Uh, yeah. Anyway, there's a lot of things you get up there. They're giving away up to 18 autographed copies of Mad Magazine. Which issue are we uh, playing for today? Uh, we'll be playing for the December issue. All right. Thank you, Dick D. Bartolo. Thank Giz you, buddy. Wiz dot biz. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Have a great Geek Week. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. 
And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.